One, by the way, Christopher. This is Mike One. And uh, we have an interesting matchup, a great matchup for you, between two teams, evenly look matchup on paper, and they're both hunting in the hunt. About third or fourth place going on in district play, two and two, and two in district, and it looks like Elgin Wildcats have come off a loss, and they are looking to rebound from that loss. Tonight is senior night for the Eagles, Cedar Creek Eagles, and whoa, I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was my phone. Excuse me. So, uh, uh, looks like both quarterbacks look healthy. Mike one is too loud. Okay. Um, turning down mic one. Let me know when I'm perfect. Uh, yeah. Maybe right here. Like the gain or the volume? Test, test, test. Yes. Um, so, Cedar Creek Eagles look like um, they're going to be the ones in the blue, and the uh, Elgin Wildcats are going to be all white. Um, am I still too loud? Test, test, test. All right, William Peter McFarland goes off to the pass, passes to Taryn, well, no, <laughs> Daniel Johnson, but Daniel Johnson looks like he might not be playing for today. He looks like he isn't suited up. And um, we'll see who takes his place. There's also a few other good receivers, like Ty McFarlane. Um, how does it sound now? Do I sound well for Mike One? It's at noon at the moment for volume. Test, test, test. Let's give a shout out to KMAC Sports Fight Media. Um, shout out to all those fans who come support your high school sports, your high school teams, football, and all. It's such a pretty stadium here, such a beautiful night. It's a great night for fall football. It is a great fall night, the weekend before Halloween. This is my favorite time of the year to play football because you get the beautiful weather, plus it's Friday Night Lights. Who doesn't like playing on Friday Night Lights? Um, but yeah, Christopher, how do I sound now? Let's, let me go ahead and do a check for mic two as well. Um, so it looks like uh, Peter McFarlane might have the shot tonight to st be the starting quarterback. So far, the past two games, he has been the main one behind the gun. And he has been dominant so far in the running game. He, he has improved since the beginning. Not too many turnovers and scoring points and getting the football to the wide receivers. But as well, Jacob Harkins looks like he might be back as well. Last week's game, he played one play, the first possession, and went out. So it's good to see him back on the field. How do I sound? Chris? Test, test, test. How do I sound? Testing. We have Elgin Wildcats versus the Cedar Creek Eagles. This is Bastrop Stadium. Where the Bears and the Eagles play. So let's share the lineup for you for your Elgin Wildcats. So, Star Wars Jacob Harkins. This is his second year on varsity. 
Um, hold on. We are too hot. Bring down to nine o'clock. Okay. How do I sound now? But right, down to nine o'clock, and I'll bring the other one down to nine o'clock as well. All right. So, how does that sound, Christopher? Aaron Testis. is escorted by his dad, Aaron Perales Sr., stepmom, Irene Perales, right, mom, that's... Mary Helen Tiarina, and stepdad, Pito Tiarina. Hello? Hey. Nathaniel Salas. All right, so I don't know who's going to be the one with the, the starting by his mom. job with the QB, Ginger but it looks like I love the combination that they have between... Jacob Harkins and Peter McFarlane, as you know, because P Peter McFarlane is also a running back. He, he plays both positions, and um, but I feel like P Jacob Harkins also has a dominant. He can like pass the ball um, easier to tie McFarlane. His accuracy is a little more. Uh, Hope is escorted. They're distorting also by move the mic. Mom, Courtney Adams and granddad grandmom Shirley Adams. Okay. Yeah. I, I changed it, so it might have been a ha it might have been a delay, Owen Chris. Miller. Um But yeah, right now, as I mentioned, it's senior nights senior night Owen for your Cedar Cut Cedar Creek Eagles. Jarks. Shout out to all the seniors. Shout out to all those. I remember it was when I was my senior night, and this is like my, the best time to represent your family, your parents, your loved ones. And um, I know it's Cedar Creek, and speaking of Cedar Creek, this is one of the K-Mac Bowls. All right. And now for okay, our now senior um, I'll, I'll need to go to Mike, too. Tori Bly Troy. All right, so this is Mike Tori too. Is escorted by her mom, Maria Bly Troy, um, and her we're testing brother, out. Michael Bly Troy. And shout out to the Eagles, who Lauren are seniors. Spoon. It is that year that you'll remember for all the seniors out there. And Paul Steve, Steve Thank you for the support, KMAX Sports Fight Media. Bring up Gain Sightly, and you'll be good. All right. Maddie Tarasos. And I need to play my spot real quick. By Kelly and Let's play some. Uh. Socialize with us. You want to have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. Caitlin is escorted by our One, two, three, and more coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Emma is escorted by Bonnie and Dr. Joseph Bosard. KMAX Sports is on Twitter. Get up to date scores and more on your computer and on the go with your smartphone. It's fast and easy. Just follow us at KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. By our mom, Sanja or Elias. And Ashley Gonzalez. Okay, right, this is the crowd mic. Elizabeth Rosales. And now, our senior band members. Elizabeth Adams. Elizabeth is escorted by her dad, Mark Adams, and Grandpa, Willie Adams. Riley Adams. 
Riley is escorted by Sean and Anthony Adams. Alyssa Cadena. Alyssa is escorted by Moses and Anissa. Moses Cadena and Anissa Cavazos. Hayden Chance. Hayden is escorted by Les and Tanya Chance. All right, so it's at noon. So the crowd, Dubay. I feel like, sounds pretty good. Daniel is escorted by his mom, Jennifer Dubay, and brother, Dylan Dubay. Emily Evans. Emily is escorted by Brian Evans and Micaiah Evans. Gabriela Gonzalez. Gabriela is escorted by her parents, Manuel and Isela Chares. Mickey Hanish. Mickey is escorted by parents, Mike and Juanita Hanish. Phoebe Hayes. Phoebe is escorted by Dan and Ashley Hayes. Victoria Maldonado. Victoria is escorted by parents, Mauro and Diana, Diana Rodriguez. And sister, Katia Rodriguez. Mystic McWilliams. Mystic is escorted by Marisa McWilliams and Daniel Pease. Brittany Nutt. Brittany is escorted by parents Leslie and Corey Nutt and brother Braden Nutt. Bart Rifle. Bart is escorted by Pete and Beth Rifle. Scott Stalkup. Scott is escorted by Craig and Anna Stalkup. And Nick Winsky. Hey. They're all set, ready Nick is escorted by Teresa and Phil see. Winsky. Ladies and gentlemen, here. these senior, Cedar Creek senior students have put in their time and effort to make this a better school and a better place to be. On behalf of the entire Eagle family, we thank you for your continued support and wish you well in your future endeavors. Your 2018-2019 Cedar Creek Eagle seniors.
Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to district court policy and state law, all public school property in Bathrop ISD prohibits the use of tobacco products, cigarettes of any kind, including e-cigarettes and vapes, alcohol, drugs, it. Oh, good. So you got players. All right. Also, and uh, not these stars, what's the stars mean right next to them? These like key players? Oh, so guys, the out. Okay, sweet. And ladies and gentlemen, perfect. Fans of the Cardinals are not allowed on the field at any time Okay, so Harkins is not out. Good job. Yeah, Thank you for your cooperation. Yeah. Harkins looks like he has a bit of an issue. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for more Super Crew Jiggles starting lineup. First, on Eagles defense, cornerback Damian Perez. Oh, he definitely is. Harkins. Defensive end, Jacob Turner. Carlin is kind of like, like all the time. Defensive tackle, like, Alfred Collins. Mm -hmm. Linebacker, right, Josh Garza. Throws up for time for Linebacker, Kate Edwards. Matter if he's in double or not, he just tackle, William Rangel. Can't find anyone. He just tucks in. Tucks and in Eric Moran. Kind of he's Strong an experienced. He's, he's, he's a sophomore. He hasn't. Free safety, start Javon Livingston, it's essentially desperation. and cornerback, Dalen Jackson. I mean, he can throw a deep ball. He's got and a good arm. And Creek Eagle offense. At that wide receiver, number eight, Payne Allen. Oh, yeah. Receiver, number seven, Clay Ben Clark. Tackle, Carlos Medina. Guard, Chris Juleson. Center, Adrian Cavazos. Guard, Brian George. Tackle, Dalton Hortness. At running back, Colton Fitzhugh. Quarterback, Hunter Houston. Running back, Dominique Mujica. And receiver, Ty Pruitt. Physicians Premier Emergency Room is the new standalone emergency room right here in Bastrop on Highway 71 next to Wendy's. With a wide array of services, the professional at Physicians Premier are able to treat both adults and children for virtually any emergency issue you could come up with. From flu to broken bones to burns, they have the experience and skills needed to understand and diagnose your symptoms properly. Their skilled physicians and nurses will make sure you receive the help you need as quickly as possible. And with advanced technology, they will help to make the process that much smoother, saving you valuable time. Physicians Premier, proud supporter of BISD Athletics and the Cedar Creek Eagles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field for the introduction of your 2018-2019 Cedar Creek Eagle cheerleaders. When you combine love, integrity, and skill, you create a legacy. And now, your Eagle cheerleaders. Captain, Maddie Tarasas. Co-captain, Tori Blood Troy. Lauren Spoon. That sounds about right. Yeah, he, like, he knows. Like, he, he has his stats and everything. Raiden Ali. Oh, yeah. When I, when I first got to take a look at this, one of the guys that was doing color commentary for, you know, Caitlin Casey. He was at the booster club. And he doesn't get paid. He's just on the booster club. Yeah. Casey Coffey. They, they like that, and they also don't like that, because sometimes the parents can be a little bit more. Kaya biased. King. It's not necessarily biased, but they start... Caitlin Maddox. Kelly Parker. Alex Rosso. Lucy Rodriguez. Exactly. That's 
Ashlyn Taylor. Janelle Wilcom. Ladies and gentlemen, your cheerleader of the week last week for Pflugerville Weiss, Caitlin Casey. And cheerleader of the week this week, Lauren Spoon. These are your 2018-2019 Cedar Creek Eagle cheerleaders. That works too. So we're going to go on at 15 and 30. So, I was thinking, like, uh, which one am I in? Am I number two? Am I number two? No, yes, I am in number two. You should be number one. Are you sure? Because it's turned at number one. I don't get any louder. I mean, like, in the, in the headphone thing, not, 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 not in the mixer. Oh. I thought I assigned them the same. Uh, that's all good. just want to know so I can turn myself up. I've got a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's better. That's, that's a lot better. All right. So, like, during the intro... When we're talking and we kind of run out of stuff to say, we'll just cut to a commercial for a little bit because that's what I. Well, I say what well, sounds. Well, let me hold on. Let me text this dude. Um, I say um, introduce the game. Yeah. We'll do our intros. I do a part. You do a part, and then we go to commercial. Yeah. Well, so want to talk about? You know, both teams are three and four, right? Like the exact same record. Like again, like second week in a row they play a team with the the same record as them. And I believe they're both coming off a loss. So. Yeah, both are two and two in district and three and four overall. And they're both coming off a loss. I mm -hmm. I do believe. Yeah. So that kind of adds a bit more fuel to the fire. Talk about senior night here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. The BISD Athletic yeah. Department would like to recognize and thank Benny's Barbecue for sponsoring. I can do my best to do stats. Evening. We'll see how it goes. Tennessee, I'll do Texas, better Georgia, since I'm more confident with this. Yeah, once you kind of get it down. Um, Complete with all the fixings, our southern comfort food is sure to satisfy any appetite. Our recipes have been gathered over six generations and across three families. So here's in um, an interest. And soul food. So if, whole family and experience he, our if Wildcats can pull yourself, off victory, you'll never forget your first time, and you will be um, back for more. This team, located on Highway 71 uh, in Cedar, Cedar Creek, Texas, Cedar Creek Eagles, Cedar Creek Eagles, like Eagles. Yeah. The Eagles they they won actually we'll against. Benny's Barbecue, thank you for your the support. The Brenham Cubs? The Brenham Cubs, there you go. Yeah. And the Cedar Creek yeah, they won against Brenham Cubs. So that way, it, it kind of puts it in like a tie. Yeah, it gets them a tiebreaker scenario. So this is a big game for them. So it's, either way, it's a huge game. Yeah, so. If the Elgin Wildcats end up like not pulling off, they probably have a slimmer. Yeah, but it does make their chance slimmer every time you, every loss you take. So. Yeah, every, yeah especially in district. So this is, a, this is a pretty big game for them because, you know, they're coming off a loss, you know, their their quarterbacks back in. They're both coming off a loss. They're both two and two in district, and this team beat Brenham, so it will definitely help out their chances. So that's a good thing to to bring up. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that this Bingo Brigade is, or they're dan like look on look they're like dancers. They're dancers, and there's only there's only one guy on the sideline, so I'm not really sure what's going on. Unless that's another unless that's another girl that's dressed up like in a suit. Thank you. It happens sometimes, and the weather for tonight's game, it is 69 degrees, perfect weather Perfect weather for football. And it should get as low as 54, but that won't be for a little while. So we're going to in for great weather tonight for football. Are you ready to go live? 
about to. All right. Wildcats football versus the Cedar Creek Eagles. Both teams are three and four. Both teams are two and two in district, and both teams are coming off of a loss here. Elgin last week lost to the Brenham Cubs, 35 to 20, and their quarterback Jacob Harkins was out in the first series. McFarland was able to come in, but not able to overcome the Brenham Cubs offense. So this should be an interesting matchup today. Harkins was warming up today, right, Michael? He was warming up. Yeah, both players were warming up. Um, Harkins and McFarland were just passing it off to each other. And I feel like they're both trading reps too, with both uh, with the same ones, same offense. And um, yeah, it looks like it might be similar to what we've seen before in the past, where um, Harkins makes a start and then. We'll go. S we'll see McFarland shortly after. You might sometime. see that, but it looked like Harkins that first series had a bit of an issue with his ankle, so that might be a lingering problem. Let's hope he's okay for this series and for this game, because Elgin needs a win. They they really do need a win right now. Two and two district. They're three and four overall, and you know against this you know district opponent right here, you need a win right here. And this win is a very be a very important game. And why would that be a very important game, Michael? This is a crucial game for the Elgin Wildcats just because um, the Eagles have pulled off a win against the Brenham Cubs and Elgin Wildcats didn't do so. At, so at the same time, if Elgin Wildcats win tonight, it would be pretty much like a triple tie. <laughs> exactly. It would definitely help, <laughs> help your case there. It would definitely help their case and put them closer to that fourth and third spot where they want to be versus like behind that because as you know nowadays in district play the top four teams continue on it used to be the top three until <laughs> until it changed like I guess well my time yeah 2008. More, more teams in the playoffs more chances definitely indeed more chances game time temperature tonight is 69 degrees absolutely perfect weather there's no participation in the air and there's precipitation, excuse me, in the air. It's just absolutely perfect weather tonight for football. It's going to get even colder as the night goes on. And colder in Texas is indeed in around the 60 degree range because that's just how we roll down here. So while we're waiting for game to start, we're going to take a short break. You're listening to Elegant Wildcats football here on KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, goes into the end. Snap again, he hits the turf. And Debbie scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins has it. In the corner of the end zone. 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. 10, 5, touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. And we're back here with KMAC Sports, L broadcast of the Elgin Wildcats. It's senior night here at Bashop Memorial Stadium for the Cedar Creek Eagles. And they had a whole bunch of people come out in the field. Should be a really fun atmosphere, really fun night. Already seeing this. Excuse me, my stutter has come back with this with the vengeance for some strange reason. You can really see the crowd starting to to come in right now. And right now we're seeing the Wildcats. They're running out onto the field, getting into that tunnel. We're 10 minutes away from game time. And, you know, when I was watching football growing up, you know, like I was back in high school, so I guess I couldn't really say growing up. I was 14, though. They didn't have these tunnels that they run through, these little blow-up things they run through. You just ran out onto the field through, like, a piece of paper that you run right through. So this is definitely different. You mention this every week, but I do think it's kind of fun to point out that this is just, you know, what high school football has become now. And I love it. I love, love the fact that you get these, you know, big – special things that they get to to do for the players. It's a lot of fun for the players. It's a lot of fun for the fans. It's absolutely great. Over on the visiting side, we can see over there, is actually a fair amount of Elgin fans over there. That's always good to see. Visiting side always looks kind of 
empty, but it's good to see there's a lot of people coming out there. And the Wildcats are about to run out. See what it looks like Jerome Wayne. Actually, that's Michael Price holding the elegant Wildcats flag. He's waving it around. Smoke's coming out. Actually, both teams are about to run out onto the field. And it looks like the cheerleaders for the for the Cedar Creek Eagles, they're all dressed up in like Halloween costumes. They, they are dressed up in Halloween costumes. They're all like zombies. That's essentially what they are. In Creek, Creek, Cedar Creek Eagles, they have American flag and Elven Wildcats have the purple Wildcats flag. Wildcats today in their white uniform with white pants, a white jersey with purple numerals, and a white helmet with a purple stripe on it. It says Elga in the front. Here come the Wildcats. All right, we're going to be taking the field in a minute. You ready? Actually... You probably just need to put it on the on the players. It, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is that the PA announcer? That is the PA announcer. I, I, don't, I don't think you knew he was talking in the microphone. I don't think so either. <laughs> but as you mentioned before, I love the, that plastic helmet that you run out. And back in my day, when I was playing football, we ran through that piece of paper. And it makes it feel more like a wrestling match. You know, you're getting ready to go out on the field. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you're like, I'm about to bring it. I'm about to bring it on this Friday Night Lights here in Texas. And it, you face it, you and play every day to, to be that champion for that, for that game, at least. So the Eagles have a black jersey with green numerals with a little white outline wearing white pants with a black hat with the number on the side of the helmet. I did say hat, but it, it is a hat. It's a helmet. Right, want to call it. So, Michael, here's a question for you, speaking of wrestling and, you know, kind of running out. If you had a song, like you say you're playing baseball, you're a wrestler, that you would come out to, what would that song be? So, you, you watch wrestling back in the day. I, I, did, I know about it. I didn't really watch much of it, but Okay, so you know about the Rock, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So, so, so you would pick the the Rock. Smell what the Rock is cooking. Smell what the Michael's cooking. Smell but what the Mike's <laughs> cooking. There you go. Smell what the Mike is cooking because yeah. you turn the mic up, you gotta turn it loud. Definitely. Be proud. Listen to the mic. What is cooking? If we knows, tune well, in. <laughs> on on that note, let's see what the Elgin Wildcats have cooking. About six minutes, forty three seconds till game time. They're about to come out for the coin toss. And you know, Wildcats, like we mentioned, they they need it. They need this victory. Both teams need this victory in a in a bad way. So this should be a fun matchup. You might see everything is thrown out onto the table, and you may just see you know you may see trick plays. You may see onside kicks like you do in high school football. And this is why I love high school football, because you get to see the stuff you don't usually see in college and pro ball. You get to see all the the crazy, the wacky plays. It's it's like watching Sandlot football. Almost. The captains for tonight's game. From Elgin, number 15, Ty McFarland. Number 72, Cedric Chewett Jr. And number 90, Xavier Newells. Coming out, Creek. coming out for the coin number toss. Two, Hunter Houston. Number 20, Aaron Perales. Number 44, Jacob Turner. And number 74, Brian George. Aaron Perales for the Cedar Creek Eagles coming out there in the shorts. He will not be playing tonight. But still coming out for the coin toss. So Elgin's won the coin toss the last few times and have elected to res to kick every time. So let's see if they win this one. Taking a bit of time to flip the coin by trying to figure out what they want to figure out. Elgin has won the toss. Elgin has won the toss, and no word, I think, yeah, they are going to defer. 
and they're going to defend the left end zone as the Cedar Creek Eagles will defend the right end zone. Cedar Creek will receive. Shake hands, men. I think it's just about time for the national anthem. Just coming up here in just a short while. So Ty McFarlane was out there for the coin toss. He had a pretty good game yes, last week. Caught many now, deep balls and thrown. Him. We ask that you please rise as we honor our great nation, the United States of America. I'll pause for a second the for the National colors, Anthem. And the playing of the National Anthem. This evening's color guard is being provided by the Path Drop High School Navy Junior ROTC Unit under the direction of Captain Chris Fletcher, United States Navy retired, and Chief Petty Officer David Canales, United States Navy retired. The color guard is commanded by Cadet Lieutenant Commander Richard, Cadet Senior Chief Petty Officer Warby, Cadet Ensign Rutledge, and Cadet Seaman Apprentice Segura. The colors at the end of the field are raised by Cadet Petty Officer Third Class Swanton, Cadet Seaman Apprentice Greenlaw, and Cadet Seaman Apprentice Pitcock. Once the colors are presented, the playing of the national anthem will be performed by the Cedar Creek High School Band. All right, about a minute till kickoff. And before that, we're going to take another short break here. You're listening to Elgin Wildcat Football here in the KMAX Sports Byte Media Network. Socialize with us. You want to have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Welcome back to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMAX Sports Invite Media Network. Welcome to Jungle is playing here at Bashop Memorial Stadium. And they're just about to take the field here. The Elgin Wildcats going to be playing against the Cedar Creek Eagles. Boy, just, I love the jungle. I too love that too. If you're just now joining us, the Elgin won the toss and elected to defer. So they'll be kicking off tonight's game. 
Kicking it off will be Kenneth Escobar for the Wildcats back to receive it at the 20 yard line. I unfortunately cannot see his number. They are, he's facing perpendicular to me, so I cannot actually catch his number, so I do apologize. I, I, I do try. Escobar does not get much of a run up for his kicks. He maybe takes about three yards and uh, and then kicks it. Now going back to the, around the 15 yard line now. Uh, once again still cannot see his number. Now Escobar is only one yard back of the ball so you might not see this one kick very deep. Here we go. And the kick is away. He is going to get a lot out of it but it's going to be fielded. Actually it's not going to be fielded. The ball is going to bounce out of bounds. That was that could have been disastrous for the Cedar Creek Eagles. They let that ball go, and it just how happened to roll out of bounds. So that was a little bit surprising there. The second week in a row we've seen that where they just let the ball go right past them because that's a live ball. If Elgin caught up to that one, they would have had free range to catch that one. But, Brian, at the same time, it went in their favor, the it, it, Eagles' favor, because they get good field position possession right here. And they do get good field position to start this Three game off. Zero. The kicking team, five yards, a re -kick. And we're actually going to re-kick here. Oh. Now, this is a bit different because I thought that they would get the ball around like the 35 or the 40 yard line instead. Direction. Hang on. We'll take the ball on the 30 yard line. And that's what's going on. Cause that, that was interesting. I, I just want to tell you, the, the, the Cedar Creek Eagles offense was out on the field at the 30, expecting the ball to be snapped. So instead, it's be first and 10 on the 30-yard line of Cedar Creek Eagles. It's kind of having difficulty seeing the numbers for the, the Eagles. I cannot see the quarterback's number. I believe it is Hunter Houston. Houston in the gun. Takes a step. Hand off right side. He has it. Rumbles forward for a gain of about two yards. That is Dominic Mojica. It looks like that was number 90, Xavier Mills on the tackle for a gain of four. Hunter in the gun. Two receivers to his right. Excuse me, to his left. And there's indeed... Hunter Houston. Changing the play at the line. He has two people in the backfield with him. Takes a snap. Hand off right side. Excuse me, left side. Trying to find some running room. Can't find any running room. Finally gets a lane, and he's being dragged down past the first town marker. That was a great job there by Payne Allen to get the ball to keep moving and he was being dragged down but just able to keep his legs churning they're going to go for hurry up offense right here it's a first down the 42 yard line Houston is in the gun one in the backfield one to his left one to his right it is Mojica in the backfield with him Houston once again changing the play at the sideline at the line of scrimmage. Houston takes the snap. Hands off to Mojica, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of maybe half a yard. He, it looked like he tripped there, Michael. He was not able to get anything going, but they're going to give him a gain of at least one yard and once again back to this hurry-up offense. Great job by the D-line. Brian Solio and Marcus Rodriguez. Excuse me, just Brian Solio holding it down there. Houston in the gun. That was Jordan Hood. Number 76. It's got one in the backfield. Houston in the gun. Two people in the backfield with him. And he's going to hand it off to Mojica. Mojica dancing, dancing. And he's finally going to be brought down after a gain of maybe, maybe around four Mojica yards. That'll carry. bring up third down and leave six. For the Cedar Creek Eagles. This has been an issue for the Wildcats is getting the team off the field. This should be a big test here. See if they can get this team off the field. First third down, the face today, third and five. Houston changing the play. Two people at the backfield with him. Mojica is back there with him. Two receivers to his right. 
Houston takes the snap. He hands it off to Mojica. Mojica trying to find the corner. He's trying to keep moving, and he's going to be brought down just short of the first down marker. What a Mojica great job there by the Wildcats defense. And the play to the 49. It'll bring they're going to bring down. out the punt team here. So good job by the Wildcats to get the team off the field. That's been their issue all this season is getting the team off the field on third down. It's like Houston's going to be in to punt this one as well. Ty McFarland, is actually no one back there need to receive it. There he goes. McFarland is now back on the field, number 15. He's going to set up shop right around the 15-yard line. Moving it back now to the 10. Houston takes a snap, kicks it off, and it's a pretty good kick. It's going to bounce, take a Cedar Creek bounce, but then let's see where they down this one. That was an interesting bounce. And they're going to down it at the one-yard line. What a lucky bounce for the Cedar Creek Eagles. That ball was bouncing around the sideline, and it, and it bounced just outside the pylon, and that's like on the one-foot line. So... What a great job there. Yeah, you don't see that often. And <laughs> looks like the Wildcats only have to go 99 yards. Yeah, they have a long way to go here. McFarlane, actually, no, it's going to be Jacob Parkins in. He's going to set up under center. McFarlane in the backfield. Two receivers to his left, two to his right, now in motion. Actually, no, McFarlane is going to be in the game. And he's going to hand off. Has some running room. I could not see the number. I do apologize. I believe that was Jerome Ray. Indeed, it was. McFarland is in at QB. For the Wildcats. Actually, Harkins is in. Line. It'll be second down and six. No, he's not. I'm having difficulty saying numbers tonight, apparently. But McFarland is in the gun. Second and four now on the five-yard line. Or second and, second and six on the five-yard line. McFarland's going to be in the gun. I sub in motion. McFarlane's going to take his time. He's going to take it himself. He's going to run to the right side. He's got running room, and he's tried to find a lane. He's just tripped up at the five-yard line. So he got a gain oh, of around nothing. And it looks like there's a player down Jake the field Edwards. for the Cedar Creek Eagles Andrew holding his leg. So while they tend to that, we're going to take a short break here, listening to Wildcats football here on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. Two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now. So McFarland is back in the gun. They had a gain of nothing. McFarland was trying to find a running room. It's still going to be third and six at the five-yard line. So Wildcats, after a gain of four, after then had a gain of nothing on the McFarland run. So now, let's see what they do here. It's going to be McFarland all by himself in the gun. One receiver to his left, one to his right. That's Isom and McFarland. Takes a snap. He's back to pass. All alone in the end zone. Throw it to the right side to McFarlane. The catch is going to be made by McFarlane. Pass the first down marker. Throw it, to the, threw it a bit high, but it was a perfect throw there. And it's going to be first down at the 18 yard line. I'm going to call it the 17. First down and 10. Looks like the 18. Great job by McFarlane just getting out of that, you know, one yard line spot. and in that first down. So interesting, Harkins is now in at QBs. Maybe that's just for their goal line set. So Harkins takes a snap. He's going to hand off to McFarlane. McFarlane up the middle. He's going to have nothing going. Maybe a gain of around one yard, but that's it. It's almost like hitting off to a QB and just a QB and just... <laughs> exactly. Both, both, both the QBs He's playing at the same time. Stop making Here you go. Edwards and Josh Garza. So we Harkins is in at QB now. now. Running off the field is the fullback, Juan Castillo. 
So Harkins going to have three receivers to his right and one to his left. Takes a snap. He's going to throw it right side to Trey Ison, the screen pass. Ison has some room, rumbles forward, and he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker, one yard short, right around the 30, sorry, the 26 yard line. That was a great screen by Trey Isom. Just a quick screen and close to the first down. Didn't pull it up, but one Rolls yard to go. Line. It'll be they converted their last third down, so let's see what happens here. That was a bit further. Let's see what they do with one yard to go. Harkins in the gun, takes the snap, handoff to McFarland. McFarland's going to be stuffed. He ran right into the Cedar Creek Eagles defense, and they're going to stop his forward progress two yards short of the first down marker. And let's see what they're going to do here. Harkins has yet to leave the field. McFarland's met in the backfield by Kate Edwards. And now they bring out the punt team. For a second there, it looked like they were going to go for it. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth down. And so that brings out the punt team. Back to receive it is number 12, Ashton Figura. Into punt. I cannot see his number. You think I would have figured it out by now, folks, but not quite. Take snap. Snap is a bit high. Has to bring it down and just gets it out of his hand. That was almost blocked, and it's going to take a bounce for the Cedar Creek Eagles and down at the 45-yard line of Cedar Creek. That was a good job there just to catch that ball and get it off because that was so close to being blocked. That I mean, from Trevor Magnuson goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Cedar Creek. Trevor Magnuson was that close to have the ball go over his head for one and two having to be blocked. That would have been disastrous for the Wildcats. Now, the Eagles are going to start this drive at their 45-yard line. So Hunter Houston in the gun. Two in the backfield. Changing the play at this line of scrimmage. Back in his spot. Takes a snap. He's going to hand off up the middle and finds a seam. Is number nine. That is Payne Allen for a gain of around nine, five yards. You on the okay, let's call it four yards. Gained four yards up to the 49 yard line. So good job by Allen there. Stop made there by Michael Price. It'll be second down and six for the Eagles. So second and six. Houston in the gun. Once getting, getting. Instructions from the sidelines. Can have one back there with him. Actually, two back there with him. Ready. Takes a snap. Hand off to Mojica. Mojica running the right side. Mojica runs right into the Elgin defense and gains one yard all the way at, back Mojica on the 50-yard line. So that will bring up third play. and five. Third down and five. Another third down here for the Elgin Wildcats defense. So far, tonight's game. Cedar Creek Eagles are one for two on third down conversions. Once again, getting instructions from the sideline. So Houston in the gun. Takes a snap. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw it, and catch is going to be... And they're going to pull it a catch to number six. That was Damian Perez pass complete to number sliding six, down to the three. ground all the way to the Elgin 40-yard line. First snap Game today by to either team line of Elgin. inside opponent's territory. Creek Eagle first down. First, first down, yeah, you're right. Uh, let's see what the Elgin Wildcats do on this next drive because they haven't seen this yet. Yeah, let's see this one inside the opponent's territory, inside their own territory. So it will not be Houston. It's like Houston's gonna be taking the snap. And it's gonna be handoff up the middle. He's gonna be run right into the Wildcats defense, but he's still on his feet and finally brought down after a gain of nothing is Payne Allen. Great Did job by the Elgin Wildcats defense. No All D line Stay just down. just stopped them completely and the Cedar the the Eagles didn't have nowhere to go. Had no running room. And first gain of nothing for the Eagles today. Houston in the gun. Once again, getting, getting instructions from the sideline. Every single play, he has looked over at the sideline. A little bit interesting. 
Second and ten at the 45-yard line. Takes the snap. He's going to hand off. Actually, he's going to keep it himself. Houston rumbles forward. He's, he's, he's going to be stopped short of the first down marker all the way to the 38-yard line. 33-yard line. line. Get the numbers backwards. Seven-yard gain on the play. It'll be third down and three. So third and three now, 33-yard line. Once again, getting instructions. Telling his offensive lineman what to do. And the Elga defense, they look really confused right now. They don't quite know what's going on. Takes a snap. Handoff Payne Allen. Allen trying to move forward. Breaks one tackle. And he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. However, they're going to say his forward progress was good enough for the first down all the way to the 29-yard line. 29-yard line. For another Cedar Creek Eagle first down. Yeah, the Eagles are just keep on running the ball. And the Elgin Wildcats are not finding a way to stop them. Yeah, only one passing play so far. Houston once again in the gun. But a minute and 18 seconds left to play here in this first quarter. It's been a very quick quarter. And only one series so far for the Wildcats. This is only a second series for the Eagles. First and 10. Houston in the gun. Takes a step. Hand off Payne Allen. Allen breaks one tackle. Trying to find the corner on the left side. Spin move. It can be brought down at the Leave 22-yard line. That was Sean Ankermy on the tackle. Number 88 for your play, Elgin Wildcats. It looks like they had him in the backfield, but he's just able to evade that first tackle and pick up a gain of eight yards. So second and two, the 21-yard line, what they're going to call it. Again, changing the plays. Houston. Houston takes a snap. He's going to hand off. Actually, it's double reverse. And running with it to the left side is Cedar Creek. He's going to be brought down. Ball comes out. However, it goes out of bounds. That was number, number 10. Devon Livingston on the reverse. Carries down inside the. For the Elgin Wildcats, that was great. Route run, I mean, that was great angle running by Odie Hansey to. Stop that from being a touchdown. PA announcer said it was Yvonne Livingston. However, I thought that was Colton Fitzhugh. That's what it looked like, and that will end the first quarter. So we've played one, and our score is after the first quarter, Elgin Wildcats the nothing, the first quarter. Cedar Creek Eagles after nothing. Play, We're going to take a short break here. You're zero. listening to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMAX Sports Bite Media Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. snap again, he hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins has it. Corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the Congress Avenue Bridge Bat Colony. Okay, folks, here they come. They're flying out from under the bridge. They appear to be Louisville Slugger, and they're falling. Oh, ah, oh, the humanity. As God is my witness, I thought bats could fly. Bringing your teams to you since 2003 without dropping the ball or the bat. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is on Twitter. Get up-to-date scores and more on your computer and on the go with your smartphone. It's fast and easy. Just follow us at KMAX Sports. So first and goal on the four-yard line for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Start the second quarter. Houston is going to be in the gun. Two people back there with him. Takes his time. Handoff paint down. Now he's going to keep it himself, and it's going to run the end zone. Is Houston touchdown. for the touchdown. Second drive of the game. Quarterback and touchdown and for the Wildcats on a four-yard fight for the Eagles on a four-yard run by Hunter Houston. And now to kick the extra point, Nathaniel Salas. Houston the holder, snaps down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 
So after that, the score is Wildcat. Sorry, point after by Eagles 15, seven. Is good. Wildcats nothing. Fifty-six seconds remaining in the second quarter. Your score is now Elgin zero. And so Elgin finds himself Eagles in the familiar position, down by seven. Yeah, you have to really score coming out of the gate. So far in this season. You know, game against Weiss, they were able to because you know, obviously they threw up a goose egg against them. But this is a, this has been a position that Wildcats have played most year. They just haven't been able to get. They haven't been able to score first. They haven't been able to get the team off the field and haven't been able to score. Yeah, I think it's going to be up to this offense, um, the Elgin Wildcats offense, in order to take control of this game again and as we know defense do win ball games and let's see how Elgin Wildcats regroup and Set to kick off for answer. The Nathaniel Salas. answer Salas must have a, a killer leg on him because McFarland is back almost on the side almost on the in the goal line and there's about no one in between the 30 and the 20 yard line so they're not expecting a ball to be kicked there and they're way back so there's a good time to do an onside kick. This would be it. And Salas is going to get a good running start this one. I always find it odd to have an onside kick after you score. And it is going to be an onside kick. And it bounces, and it's going to be first recovered by the Wildcats, sorry, by the Eagles, and then it goes out of bounds. So they had a chance at that one. It was a good bounce, and Wildcats are going to have the ball inside the 50-yard line. Now, I'm not sure what the ruling is in this one because it was it's right because it was touched. There is no penalty for the ball going out of bounds now. So the Wildcats are going to start this right in opponent's territory, right at the 49 yard line. Brian, he called that one. I, I, I was wrong, completely wrong. Yeah, I, it looked like because they were so far back, but they were actually they were prepared for it because they didn't run backwards. They stood completely still. The Wildcats did. So they were they were somewhat prepared for that one. So Harkins is back out at QB. McFarland in the gun. He's gonna have, actually McFarland's going to be the one taking the snap, and he's gonna take the snap, trying to find runner, and he's gonna be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. So the design quarterback run went for a loss of two yards. So they're still on the 49-yard line. Just this time, it's the Elkin 49-yard line. Football's weird like that sometimes. So McFarlane, once again, is going to be taking the snap. Harkins is in the game, but he's only seen action on one series so far. So this is a little bit interesting. So Ty McFarlane's going to be set in motion. They're going to hand off McFarlane in a, in a jet sweep. McFarlane has running room, turns on the Jets, and brought down at the 42-yard line. Great theory. speed by Ty McFarlane, man. He just goes, room. Yeah, he went from, he went from 0 to 60. Real fast. That'll Great. bring up third and three on the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and three. So Harkins is now going to be in the gun. McFarlane in the backfield. Three receivers to his right. Takes a snap. Hand off McFarlane right side. McFarlane trying to get to the line, line of scrimmage. And he's going to be brought down one yard short of the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth down and four to go. Peter McFarlane on the carry. So far, McFarlane hasn't really had much success Edwards. running the football. One on the play will bring up fourth down and four for the Wildcats. And not really seen anything yet. It looks like it looks like the Wildcats. Yeah, the Wildcats are going to be going for this one here on their on the Cedar Creek 43-yard line. Harkins is going to be take this one in the gun. Getting directions from the sideline. Harkins in the gun. McFarlane in the backfield. Three receivers to his left. Ty McFarlane to his right. Takes a snap, and he's going to throw it. Catch is going to be intercepted by the Cedar Creek Eagles, and he's got running room. And finally brought down by Jacob Harkins. Has a touchdown-saving tackle. He threw it into coverage there, but there's a flag on the play. This one might come back. Let's check the flag first. This might be against Cedar Creek. And it's going to be holding against Cedar Creek. Now, I'm not sure what happens here. The ball may get back in the hands of the Wildcats. We had a block in the back after the interception. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. 
So that happened after the interception, so the ball was still in Cedar Creek's hand. Harkins tried to force that pass in the double coverage. But it does bring the ball back all the way to the 39-yard line. 29-yard line. Seems like a bit further back than I thought. I thought they were a bit further forward than that because they said it was only a 10-yard penalty. And I could have sworn they were in their opponent's territory when he was finally brought down unless he was pushed out of bounds. So anyways, Houston will be in the gun. Once again, getting instructions from the sideline. He's got two people back there with him. Two receivers to his left. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw it left side. Catch is going to be made and pushed out of bounds. Catch made by Payne. Actually, excuse me, that is... Pass complete to number eight, Payne Allen. Actually, Payne Allen. Bounds by number three, Taryn Johnson. Payne Allen is number eight. <laughs> and pushed out of bounds by Taryn Johnson. Taryn Johnson. Great stop Second by him six. for just a few yards on the game. It is Colts Fitzhugh, who is number nine. I've been getting that wrong all night. I do apologize to... Fitzhugh's parents, if they're listening, or they might be listening over on the other booth right now. K Mac is also calling the game for Cedar Creek Eagles at the same time as we're calling this one. So Hugh takes the snap. Sorry, Houston takes the snap, and and he's going to be brought down after a gain of two yards all the way to the 35-yard line. I believe that was Dominic Mojica. Number 21, Dominic Mojica on the carry. Gets the ball up to the 35-yard line. So, It'll be third down and four. So third and four now in the 35. Houston will take this one in the gun. It's like he's got Mojica back there with him as well as Fitzhugh. Looks like we might see some blitz on here by the Elgin Wildcats. You might possibly. see you might see that one. They've been running the ball a lot on third down. They've only thrown the ball once today. So Houston takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff under pressure, and he's going to try to tuck it in and run, and he's going to be banged out of bounds by number 17 of the Elgin Wildcats. That is Odie Henze, short of the first Odie down marker. Shout out to William Simmons, also your outside linebacker, for bringing that QB, the QB rush for that pressure, which caused that fourth down. And Houston is going to kick this one. Back deep to receive it, Ty McFarlane. So fourth and two now. Great stop there by Wildcats defense. Nine minutes left to go here in the first half. If you try an onside kick, maybe we'll see a fake punt here. Takes that run to the right side. Almost blocked. Ball's going to take a bounce for the Cedar Creek Eagles. McFarlane wisely steps away from it. It's going to roll inside the 20-yard line, and it's going to be down at the 17-yard line. So a great punt there by Hunter Houston. So the Wildcats are going to set up shop at their own 17-yard line. Last drive, Ladies nothing going. Creek High School class of 2019. Yeah, the last the few drives, the Wildcats have been coming up short, but let's see with this awesome stop by the Elgin Wildcats defense. Maybe we'll see some good offense. Well, right now they're going back and forth between Peter McFarland and Jacob Harkins. And that's a little bit an interesting thing. I'm not, I'm, you don't usually see that, so I'm not really sure what they're trying to do here. It seems like Harkins comes in on third down. There's just not much consistency. This time Harkins will be in the gun. Two receivers to his right. Takes the snap. He's going to hand off Peter McFarlane right side. McFarlane trying to find room. He's going to be brought down after a loss of one yard. Nothing going for McFarlane tonight. He just cannot seem to find any running room. They're going to call it a game of nothing. Parents would like to thank you in advance for helping to make this first ever event a success. Buckets are being passed around. Please consider donating for this very so Harkins will be in the gun, two receivers to his left. He takes a snap, rolling to his left side. Can't find him an open. Ty throws it for Ty McFarlane, and he's going to be out of bounds. McFarlane tried to drag his feet, but could not get him in bounds. That would have been a first down. That brings up third and ten. That would have been an incredible catch as well if he was able to put one foot in bounds. It was a great pass, but just unable to bring down his foot in bounds. So it'll be third and ten now on the 17-yard line. Harkins will be in the gun. K 
getting plays in the sideline. Ty McFarlane will be to his right. Peter McFarlane in the backfield with him. Two receivers to his left. Takes a snap. It's a low snap. Trying to remove, throws it deep down the field for Ty McFarlane. And catch is going to be made by Ty McFarlane at the 40-yard line. And it's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. McFarlane beat his man. That was number 10, Javon Livingston. The number 15, Ty McFarlane. And brought down all the way 35 yard line. What a great pass there the by the Jacob Harkins. McFarlane has some breakaway speed. Just able to beat his man. That brings up first and 10 at the Cedar Creek 35 yard line. Takes the snap as Harkins. Harkins pitches out right side McFarlane. McFarlane finally gets some positive yards. And he's going to brought down at the. All the way. They're going to say he was down all the way at the 20. Eight-yard gain on the play. Second down. Twenty-seven yard lines. That that'll bring up second and two. So on the option play, McFarlane gains eight. Harkins takes a snap. Hands off McFarlane coming up the middle. McFarlane shakes one tackle. Excuse me. That was not McFarlane. That was Trayvon Black. So first down again for the Wildcats. Number 23, Trayvon Black on the carry. Momentum looks to be Moving shifting in the favor of the Wildcats after that big 10. game from Harkins to McFarlane. Peter McFarlane, nowhere to be seen in the backfield. Be Trayvon Black with Trey Isom to the right. To the left, Ty McFarlane. Takes a snap. Hand off to Trayvon Black. Black going up the middle. Brought down after a game of two yards. Trayvon Black again on the carry. Stop made by number 99, Alfred Collins. There's a flag on the play. Let's check the flag here. This might be against the Wildcats. They've had some difficulties this season with the penalties. No word yet from the official. We have foul after the play. We don't force the light. 72 white. It'll be 15 yards from the spot to the foul. And it'll be third down. So, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Cedric Truitt. That has been a problem for the Wildcats all year. Correction, it'll be second down. I thought I was a bit confused by that too when he said third down. <laughs> so that's a weird. So that means all the way back to 33 yard line. That's a long way to go. They have to get all the way to the 11 yard line to get a first down. Just a back breaking penalty there. So 23 yards to go, the 34-yard line. Harkins takes a snap, throws it right side. Catch game made by Trey Isom. Just short of the 26-yard, the 25-yard line, down at the 26. So a bit more manageable third down, but the penalties Trey have just Isom. been costly for the Moving Wildcats. The like last week, they had three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties when they were in the red zone. Yeah, that's definitely a tough penalty to have for the Elgin Wildcats, but just let's see if they can get this third down. Harkins in the gun. He's going to fake the snap, looking, throws it deep down the field to the end zone, and it's going to go right through the hands of Trey Isom. Isom reached up high, tried to catch that ball, but the unable to come down with it. Intended for Isom. Jacob Niedig almost had an opportunity at it as well, backing up defense. Trey Isom. But so over. it's going to be a long way to go here. They're on the 26. They have to get all the way to the 11-yard line. That's 15 yards to go. It's going to be fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They don't trust the kicker. It's a long way to kick this one. Harkins takes a snap. Looking. Throws it deep down the field. For Ty McFarlane, and McFarlane must have run the wrong route. There was not a single Wildcat in sight. Turnover on downs. Yeah, there was a bunch of miscommunication on that play as different route. As Jacob Harkins just overthrew him as well. And McFarlane had his man beat. So once again, a back-breaking penalty for the Wildcats. Just in opponent's territory, in the red zone, and just the back-breaking 15-yard penalty, just unable to convert. Missed opportunity there for the Wildcats. It'll be Houston in the gun. Ball in the 26-yard line of Cedar Creek. And now Eagles have the momentum with that stop. On the they do They do indeed have momentum. Yeah. 
Houston in, takes a snap, hand off to the right side. It's like it is Javon Livingston. Dominic Mojico Actually, that was Dominic, Dominic Mojico. Great job by number 28, Michael Price, Price on that rush, on that tackle. Ball on 25-yard line, second down and 11 after that loss of one. Houston in the gun. Houston once again getting instructions from the sideline. John Edwards, coach of the Cedar Creek Eagles, now changing the play. Houston in the gun. He takes a snap. One second left on the play clock. Looking for his man. Throws it downfield. Catch is going to be made by Cedar Creek. That is number seven, Clay Vic Larrick. Or Vic Larrick, excuse me. And that's good enough for a first down. And that was Trevor Magnuson. Magnuson and Davian Isom on the tackle. Great job by them to stop them. But then it was the first down. That was just a good job there. One of the few passing opportunities so far for the Eagles. And it'll be Houston in the gun. He's going to hand off to Mojico. Mojico is going to have nowhere to go. He gained of one yard, and that's about it. Elgin Wildcats brought the Mojica carries the D line Tripped pretty much four up scrimmage. front, and number seventy six came up. Nine. Jordan Hood came up with the tackle on the play, who is also O line and D line. I I don't know how you can play both O line and D line. <laughs> I mean, you'd be pretty exhausted at the end of the game. <laughs> it's incredible what this O line and D line can do. It definitely is true. Second and nine down the 38-yard line. Four minutes left to go. It's going to be a double reverse to Mojico. Mojico's going to throw the ball and wide open down the field. But he's going to be falling down as he caught it. That was a lucky play there for Clay Viclaric. Number Sorry. 17, Odie Hansi almost had the tackle on the play, but he just came up a little short. Javon Livingston able to just get that ball out in the double reverse. And it was very fortunate for the Wildcats that... Clay was the clay fell down. There was no one inside of him, so that was a good job there. Three minutes, forty seconds left to go here in the first half. Houston's in the gun. Takes a snap, hand off right side. Actually, no. Houston's going to take it himself. He's got running room at the ten yard line. Houston's going to waltz on in, but everyone in that play kind of stopped. I think there's an injured player on the field. Is there a penalty? I'm not really sure what's going on. There's a player down for the Wildcats, and everyone on the field stopped moving as soon as that happened. Houston ran all the way in the end zone. He's confused. He doesn't know what's going on. So, injured player on the field for the Wildcats. They're trying to get this sorted out, but there was no signal by the referee. Did you see a signal? I did not see a signal. Just out of nowhere, he just stopped running. and Yeah, everyone stopped running. It looked like a tackle was going to be made by the Wildcats, but there was no tackle. Now the referees are getting down. Number 88 for the Wildcats, Sean Akeen Remy, walking out the field under his own power. Shaking up on the play for the Wildcats. So let's see what the call is here. Looks like they're going to set back up at the 32-yard line. Huh. The 20. This is this is interesting. I've never seen this before. I noticed the theme in these games that we uh, produce here is there's a lot of odd calls by the refs. <laughs> Definitely. I thought that was a touchdown for Hunter Houston, but they're going to wipe that off the board. And there's been no explanation so far given by the referee. The crowd's confused. I have a feeling that the refs are probably saying, like, the whistle was blown or something. There was just no whistle that... Maybe we heard, and they're gonna back this ball up too. So it's gonna be on the 32-yard line. It's gonna be first and ten after that. It's first down and ten. Eagles play. at the 30. They didn't put the time line. back on the clock either. I, sw I, want, I want to point that out. The time still ran off the clock, so they didn't reset the game clock. That's that's a bit interesting. So first and ten, the 32-yard line. Houston in the gun. Two receivers to his right. 
takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking downfield, ball's thrown and just out of reach, and a flag thrown all the way from the other side of the field. That's going to be pass interference on the Wildcats. That was a late flag. Definitely a late flag, and it was thrown on the other side of the field. 15 yards from previous spot, first down. Stopping of a first down there. I'm still a little bit miffed on that last touchdown play. I'm, I'm, I still never got an explanation from anybody on what truly went down. But let that one get past us. Be first and ten, the 17-yard line for the Eagles. I didn't even see the interference on the play, but I think it was just enough of like a hold. I, I believe. The defensive back. I believe. Oh, he, one of my guys kind of fell down and didn't look back for the ball. So that'll be first and 10, the 17 yard line. Houston's going to hand off right side. Houston trying to find running room. Actually, not Houston, that is Jamal we'll Livingston. Six yard gain on the play down to the 11 yard line. As actually Mohica. Second down and four. And number 45, Odie Thompson, with number nine, William Simmons, on the tackle. So second and four in the 11 yard line. Takes a snap, Houston, and he's going to hand off right side, and that time Colton Fitzhugh Colton has Fitzhugh nowhere to go. I think they're going to call that a loss of yard yardage. So being up third and five now from the 13, sorry, the 12-yard line. Great job again by William Simmons, who's playing a heck of a game so far with a couple of tackles. This would be a huge stop here by the Wildcats to hold him. So Houston in the gun, takes a snap, handoff up the middle. And he's getting brought down, according to the side judge, just short of the first down marker. So fourth and two. Let's see what's going to happen here. That was a great stop by number 76, Jordan Hood, who stopped them on that. And so there's could two. have been a first down, but yep. fourth down. So it's fourth and two. Two minutes, nine seconds left to go in the half. Elgin has had, basically except for one big play, nothing going on offense. It's been all Cedar Creek so far. And they, you know, Elgin with the penalties and all those kind of things. And Peter McFarland has had nothing going on the ground so far in tonight's game. So you have to wonder what they're going to do here if you're the Ford, if you're the Eagles. Dodge, and Ram, our proud yeah, it's been a lot of Eagles football so far. Eagles. Pretty much they have wasted a lot of the time so far, and this is like the quickest first half control. that we have seen so far. I was, I was going to mention that. And they're going to go for it here on fourth and two on the 12-yard line. I don't blame them. Be Mahiko back there with them. Houston in the gun. Interesting call. Why not get the field goal kicker out there? Montoya sure takes himself. Houston, he's going to get the first down and brought down inside the five-yard line. Then again, when he can Curious run like that. Houston has four. been on fire running the football. Gain on the play. Good for another Cedar Creek Eagle. First down. Yeah, the Elgin Wildcats haven't seemed to find that answer to stop Houston. So it'll be Houston in the gun again. Takes a snap. Hand off Mika. He's going to take it himself into the end zone. For the second touchdown of the game for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Looked like he was untouched on that play as well. Hunter Houston keeps on the play and goes four yards for the score. Second rushing touchdown. After that weird call two minutes ago, he gets his rushing touchdown after all. It's be Nathaniel Salas in to attempt the extra point. Out of the hole to Houston. Sal's kick is up. And the kick is good. So a minute and 44 seconds left to play here in the first half. And the score is 14 for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Wildcats, nothing. So Wildcats have had nothing going on offense so far. And the, Wildcat and the Eagles have basically dominated this first half as far as time of possession has been. Been concerned. So, nothing really gone for the Wildcats. But, second half is coming up and they're going to be receiving this kickoff here. And they do receive the second half kickoff. 
So maybe a quick score here could really change the tide. Last week we did see Peter McFarlane lead a two-minute drill to end the half to score the first touchdown of the game for the Wildcats. So let's see what happens here. Be Nathaniel Cialis in to kick from the 40-yard line. Back deep to receive it is Ty McFarlane. Last time they attempted an onside kick. Let's see what they do here. Yeah, that that was a crazy tricky onside kick, and I had I didn't expect it, but it looks like they're probably gonna kick it off here. You never know. See how this kick, and yes, it is gonna be a short kick, but not an onside kick. Field at the 30-yard line, trying to find running room around the outside, inside the 40, and brought down right around the 40, the 44-yard line. And fielding that one was, Trev on was Trevor Magnuson. So a minute and 39 seconds left to go. And they don't have to go a very long Three way. The ball's on your own 44-yard line. line. Wildcats will have it first down and 10. So we've proven that, Hart, that Ty McFarlane can beat his man. But let's see if they go back to him. I would say just run that same play, that um, seam route that... Looks like it's always good for Ty McFarlane. He loves running that play down the field. We're going to have Peter McFarlane in at QB. He's going to take the snap, running to his right side. He has running room. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. No, he's going to be pushed, stayed in bounds. Quarterback Peter According McFarlane to the, the referees, the clock will continue to run Albert inside Collins. a minute 30 seconds. Clock is moving. I don't think they realize the clock is still Three running. Is there... play to the 47 yard line. Second down Just sitting getting the line of scrimmage. Now they're picking up the pace here. Ball in the 47 yard line, second and seven. McFarlane in the gun. Takes the snap. Back to throw. Looking, looking, looking. Can't find him. He's going to tuck it in. He's going to try to run with it. McFarlane's going to be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, and that is it. And leave a timeout. It's going to be taken by the Wildcats. McFarlane had nowhere to go, no one to throw to. Tripped up first by number 22, Mason Selby. And leave us a three yard loss back to the 44 yard line. There's a timeout by the Wildcats. 58 seconds left to go. Timeout taken by Ogan. So, Brian, what do you think is going to happen here? So, Elgin Wildcats have the ball, and they, this, I would say this is their chance that they need to pass it, go to. In Once the again, out of bounds, out of bounds, and keep the time the not yeah. running. Definitely, they do have a, do have a timeout in their pocket. Louisiana 58 seconds is a very long, very long Louisiana amount of time. It's a lot of time on the clock. Excuse me. Vinny's barbecue recipes have been gathered over six generations across three families. Shout out to all the barbecue. South, <laughs> definitely, they got barbecue you, up guys. there, and it was that's definitely delicious. <laughs> so Harkins is in Texas. at QB. McFarland back there with them. Two receivers to his left: Trey Isom and Ty McFarland. Might be seeing a post to Ty McFarlane. It's going to fake the handoff. And it's going to be thrown deep down the field. Ten up Trey Isom. And if Katz is going to be almost caught by Trey Isom, he jumped up. And he was right in his hands and just bounced out. More like deflected out by Colton Livingston of the Cedar Creek Eagles. Just a great play there. So 52 seconds left. They're going to punt this one away. And, Wildcat, and the Eagles have three timeouts. They have all three timeouts remaining. Yeah, the Eagles looked like they had great coverage on that play. It was almost there was no room for any receiver to get open. It was almost a great play there by Trey Ison. Magnuson in to punt. Takes a snap. Once again, it's a little bit high, but able to get it down. It's a booming punt, very high in the air. And catch is going to be made right at the 20-yard line. That punt is fair caught by number 12, Ashton Figueroa. Ashton Figueroa in seconds remaining in the half. It'll for be the fair catch. So 80 yards to go from the Cedar Creek Eagles. Try to make this a three-score game. They have all three timeouts, and that is a lot of time left on the clock, especially with all three timeouts. The way they've been, they've been moving the football. But they do like to run the ball, so I'm not sure the game is quite fit for this two-minute drill, so we might see them air it out here. More like a 45-second drill, but, you know. Definitely. Less than a minute drill, maybe you want to call it. So Houston in the gun. It's going to get instructions from coach on the sideline, John Edwards.
Takes a snap. Houston looking, looking. Throws right side. It's going to be a screen pass. And he's got a lot of running room, a lot of blockers in front of him. And brought down right around the, see, going to call it the 37-yard line. Now, there's going to be a timeout call by the Cedar Creek Eagles. Screen pass is to Dominique Mojica. Dominique Mojica in for the catch. And he's going to be brought all the way to the 37-yard line. So a gain of 17. And a timeout is going to be taken Dominique by the Cedar Creek Eagles. Yards out to the 37-yard line. Time yeah, they, lo they are looking Creek. to make something happen on this drive. Considering this is the fifth drive for the Eagles, and several, a couple of them have came up good. <laughs> yeah, two of them have led to touchdowns, both rushing by Hunter Houston. And as we've seen so far from, like, it really doesn't matter about the field possession that they have. They could be in... Elgin Wildcats territory and still put that ball in the end zone so far. Yeah, right now they've proven they can move the ball at will against the Wildcats. So they're trying to make this at least a three-score game, get it in field goal range or maybe even get it. Yeah, touchdown on the board. So once again, Houston in the gun. He's going to have three receivers to his right. Houston takes a snap, looking to his right side, looking, looking. He's going to throw it deep downfield, and Mojico is going to be there, and he's going to run it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Actually, that was Javon Livingston. Touchdown. Livingston just beat his man, and there's a flag on the play. It looks like they might, might have excessive celebration. yard pass reception from Hunter Houston to number 10, Javon Livingston for the score. So Javon Livingston... Once again, it's going to be now it's a three score game. Let's check the flag though. Just sideline warning. We're sideline warning. Cedar Creek. Touchdown is good. And they're going to call it a sideline warning. Once again, number two, Hunter Houston throws to number two. Just 10, like Devon that. Livingston. 80 yards. 80 yards in two plays, it seems. And 26 seconds left to go. First touchdown score today, but it was not by. Houston, though he was involved with it, extra point by Cialis by is, good. is good. Salas, excuse me. And with 26 seconds, remaining 20 seconds half, left to go. The score is four. Cedar Creek Elkins 21, zero. Wildcats nothing. Cedar Creek Eagles 21. So Wildcats find themselves in a pretty deep hole they have to dig out of here in the second half. Yeah, but I've seen many of games that, you know, your team is down by 21 and, you know, they come back. It's yeah. It's just a matter of timing and getting that bounce towards your way. Yep. And there's only, you know, there's still a full second half left to play, and Elgin will receive a second half kickoff. And they do have one timeout and 26 seconds left to get at least in field goal range. So once again, Nathaniel in to kick this one deep. Back deep to receivers, Ty McFarlane. Solid set to kick off for the Eagles. They have yet to McFarlane kick the ball deep really the deep. Isom's back there with them. And there's only one person in between the 35-yard line and the 20-yard line. And that'd be Trevor Magnuson and Teron and Teron Johnson. And here we go. Here's the kick. And it's going to be a little pooch kick, and it's going to be fielded first, bobbled by Johnson. Johnson, he breaks one tackle. Johnson down the sideline. Johnson all the way to the 45-yard line. Johnson hit him right in his hands, able to pick it up, outrun the coverage. Number three, Teron Johnson on the return. And there's a player down for the Cedar Creek Andrew Eagles. On the field. Not be sure who it is. He looks okay, though. Why did I get that sorted out? We're going to take a short break here. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMX Sports Invite Media Network. Socialize with us. You want to have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way, KMAX Sports is bringing your teams to you. That was Mason Selby. Down, he walked up under his own power. He's okay on the sideline, so... It's going to be first and 10 with 22 seconds left to go on the 43-yard line of Cedar Creek for the Elgin Wildcats. So only have to go 43 yards to get the ball in the end zone. 22 seconds left. You have a timeout. Arkins takes the snap from the gun. Throws it deep down the field, and it's going to be almost intercepted 
right through the hands of Javon Livingston. <laughs> Livingston would have caught a touchdown and caught an interception. Would have just been one of those kinds of days. Overthrown pass intended for Ty McFarlane. Looked like there was some cube fusion again between Jacob Harkins and Ty McFarlane on that play. Indeed, it did look like that. So once again, in the gun is Harkins. McFarlane in the backfield and also Ty McFarlane in the side. Back to pass, throws it. Pass can be intercepted by number 44. Trying to set up a screenplay, and he's going to be all the way to 10 to 5. It's going to be a touchdown for the Wildcats. Thanks, Trey, for the Peter Creek Eagles. I don't know where that ball was going to on that play. That was a screen pass intended for Peter McFarlane. That pass is intercepted by number 44, and Jacob Turner. Jacob Turner was just right there to receive it. It was almost thrown right to him. Returned 55 yards. And in the span of 45 seconds, it went from 14 to nothing to 27 to nothing and 28 to nothing, pending the extra point. It has gone from bad to worse for the Elgin Wildcats. Nathaniel Salas in attempt the extra point. Kick is down. Kick is up. And kick is good. The extra point by Salas is good. And after the interception, 55 yard return touchdown by Jacob Second Turner. interception today the by Jacob Eagles. Harkins. First pick six. So 28 to nothing. Cedar Creek leads the Elgin Wildcats. And if you didn't think it could get any worse, it, it did. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Harkins just rushed that pass, I feel like, um, as they were they're down a little bit here, and then it came up to be 14 extra points to be down in a bigger hole for the Elgin Wildcats. However, I mean, you have some speed on your side, and, you know. And it, it, he was also under pressure, was Jacob Harkins. He had people bearing down on him and just unable to get over the head of Jacob Turner. But yeah, I, like straight up, I would just go in halftime right now and regroup with Coach Jens, Jens Anderson, and calm the troops and bring them back out. Because it's the There's game's some. obviously not over yet. Still have a second half left to play. You do receive a second half kickoff, so you still do have time to come back in this game. The defense is going to have to step up here and make some stops. So Nathaniel in to kick it, and it's going to be not a very short kick. In fact, it's going to go out of bounds. So still five seconds up in the clock, trying to do a little squib kick. And while John Anderson for the Cedar Creek D on sideline is screaming something at the official. So flag, check the flag here. Was the ball kicked out of bounds? Let's see what they're going to do. Quick procedure. On the kicking team, five yards for the spot of the out of bounds. It'll be first down. So it'll be first down with five seconds left to go on the 43-yard line of the Elkin Wildcats. And no surprise here, the Cedar Creek Eagles are going to be bringing out their prevent defense. So all the way back at the 35-yard line, it is Aston Figueroa and Avon and Javon Livingston. First down and 10, Wildcats. McFarland's going to be in the gun. It's like they're going to throw this one deep down the field. McFarland takes a snap. He's actually going to run himself up the middle, breaks one tackle, and he's finally going to be brought down at the 45-yard line. So trying to fool him there. But that's going to take us to the half. Peter McFarland on that carry. Not a very productive first half for the Wildcats. Everything went against them in the final two minutes. They find themselves down 28 to nothing. On that play, tackle made by Selby and Evans. So we're going to play for you the Elgin Wildcats band. We'll return Please after the band is over. So our score at halftime, Cedar Creek Eagles 28, Elgin Wildcats nothing. So while they get ready to let the band play, we're going to take a little short break before we hit the band listening to Wildcats football here in the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Look at left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap complete. again, he hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXsports.com or Chuck at KMAXsports.com to find out how. 
bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. Sound off. Tell us what you think right here on Twitter at KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social skill. On Twitter at KMAX Sports or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. Diamonds will be performing an upbeat palm routine to Land of a Thousand Dances. The Purple Diamonds dance team is under the direction of Ashley St. and Lauren David. Line officers are Major Allison Gravis, Major Lizette Guerrero, and Major Minerva Suarez. Social officers are Ramala Inushike and Hannah Flory. Spirit Girl of the Week is Stephanie Alvarez. Diamond of the Week is Vanessa Cruz. And Director's Choice is Elizabeth Jimenez. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to present the award-winning Elgin High School Wildcat Marching Band. The band is led on the field by drum majors Jessica Kirkpatrick and Jackie Boucher. 
Band members of the week as chosen by the directors are freshman Jamie Robledo, sophomore Stefan Ross, junior Sean Mayberry, senior Beatrice Mendoza, guard member of the week is Hannah Maynard. Section of the week is the drum line. The Wildcat Marching Band is performing the first movement of their 2018 UIL program entitled Beyond the Clouds. Music arranged by Steve Bento and drill designed by Andy Ty. Drum majors, you may take the field. Take it away, Wildcats.
The Elgin High School Wildcat Band is directed by Armando Martinez, Allison Keller, Christopher Montemayor, Celicia Counts, Jillian Bocclini, and Melissa Anderson. The band has received first place at the Capital City Marching Festival, Del Valley Showcase, and the Lost Pines Marching Festival. The Wildcat Band has also received a superior rating at, by all three judges at the UIL Region 26 Marching Contest. The Wildcat Band will represent the community of Elgin. Hey Booster Parents, Get Involved is a new all-in-one tool that helps you raise funds, sign up volunteers, collect items, and promote your event or cause. It's never been so easy to get so much done. Forget the multiple volunteer, fundraising, and sign-up lists. It's now all-in-one. Get involved today at getinvolvedco.com. That's getinvolvedco.com. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, right in the middle of them. Smile. Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end. Bad snap complete. again. He hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins the corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. He's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAX Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAX Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAX Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmaxsports.com or merle at kmaxsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAX Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. This is the KMAX Sports Network, and this is what we do. Look at left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap complete. again, he hits the turf, and, and Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins wins it. the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the Congress Avenue Bridge Bat Colony. Okay, folks, here they come. They're flying out from under the bridge. They appear to be Louisville Slugger, and they're falling. Oh, ah, oh, the humanity. As God is my witness, I thought bats could fly. Bringing your teams to you since 2003 without dropping the ball or the bat. We are KMAX Sports. Two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAX Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, 
KMAX Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAX Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmaxsports.com or merle at kmaxsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAX Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. K-Max Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Socialize with us. You want to have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at K-Max Sports. Or catch us on Facebook. Search K-Max Sports. Just another way K-Max Sports is bringing your teams to you. Two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. KMAX Sports is on Twitter. Get up-to-date scores and more on your computer and on the go with your smartphone. It's fast and easy. Just follow us at KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap again, he hits the turf. And And Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins has it. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network, and this is what we do. Look at left, throws into the end zone. Snap again, he hits the turf, and, and Del Bar scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins has the corner has of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. And we are back. This guy on there. There we go. The microphone on the wrong side. All right, so we're back here. About 10 minutes left to go before kickoff of the second half. And the Wildcats find themselves deep in the hole, 28 to nothing. With 45 seconds left to play, less than two minutes to go, the score was 14 to nothing. And then all of a sudden, a big pass play and a pick six. And now the score is 28 to nothing. And that all happened in basically the span of, I'm sorry, microphone's getting a little bit cattywampus on me. It all happened in the span of 45 seconds. The score going from 40 to 28 to, to 14 nothing and 28 to nothing. Literally scored in all that amount of time. Yeah, that was intense, Brian. Yeah. Uh, I had no clue, like, what was going on because like it was just like that like quick and out of nowhere you just see two touchdowns i mean seconds or less it, it, it was it was, it was pretty a pretty intense just series of events there and you know talking to you know the other booth you'll be at the other elgin uh, k-mac booth here they're calling the cedar creek game as a note here by the way we, we 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 will call the other teams you know games too so if you ever Want us to call your games? If you're a you know, fan of their team school, give us a call. We'll try to see if we can work something out. We're always down to call whatever we can. But Jacob Turner, the one that had that pick six, according to him, he doesn't have very good hands. He has brick hands, what they <laughs> were told. So that's like his first pick six. So that tells you what kind of first half it was for the Wildcats. Two interceptions thrown by Jacob Harkins. They're going back and forth between Harkins and Peter McFarlane in at QB. And they just cannot seem to get in rhythm. This going back and forth, I just they haven't been able to get consistency and get rhythm. McFarlane hasn't really had much going on the run game. 
And they've had two big plays, both of Ty McFarlane. Right now, it's kind of like Sandlot football. They throw the ball deep down the field for Ty McFarlane and just unable to connect. But with the second half left to go, it, there's still plenty of time to rally the troops together and hopefully get back in this game. Now, I've seen crazier stuff happen before. You know, Elgin Wildcats softball, and I was calling them during, during the playoffs, they had their fair share of just incredible comebacks. You know, the first two series, they were down a game in a best of three series, and they were able to win both of those games. And in fact, one of them, they were down three runs in the bottom of the seventh inning and able to score four to walk it off to force a game three. So it is not out of the realm of possibility for the Wildcats here to come back in this game. Not at all. But the defense for the Wildcats is going to have to step up. They've not been able to get very many stops. Granted, it was 14 to nothing. It was a pretty manageable game, but just that series of events makes this a four-score game. So not much really you can do there. So, Michael, what are your thoughts here on the first on that first half of football? So, overall, the first – I say the first quarter was decent for the Elgin Wildcats. You know, it was a stop, stop. Then, um, of course, Elgin – it was a long – like, that first quarter was super fast where they didn't – I believe they scored the first touchdown. Was that in the first quarter? They did. Actually, that was, was the start. Was, that was the start, start of the second start quarter. Start of the second quarter. So it was like pretty much. It was almost in the first quarter, but start of the second quarter. That's right. And they literally just scored all twenty-eight points in the second quarter. And um, just like you said, the bad turn of events just with that pick six and that other pick before that. Um, even though they did have that stop on that first interception, however, it did give the Cedar Creek Eagles momentum going on and building that up. And speaking of teams around the district play, I am need to update you with their scores at halftime at the moment. So Bastrop High School Bears are up 13 to 10 over Brenham High School Cubs. Glenn High School Grizzlies are in Marble Falls High School Mustangs. Marble Falls Mustangs are up 7-0 in that game. So a close battle between those two games, and as you know, we are down 28 points, Elgin Wildcats. But like you said, we have there's enough time. If Eagles can score 28 points in one quarter, I mean Elgin Wildcats can do much more damage in each quarter. Yeah, that's put up 56 points. That's a good thing to note is you know the the Cedar Creek Eagles scored all their points. All in the second quarter. That's just how productive they were in the second quarter. You know, the Wildcats, they were able to hold them to no points in the first. So they've proven they can stop them for at least a quarter. But that second quarter was a whole nother beast. And most of those points, you know, half of them obviously coming off the final two minutes. And so it, it really is just, a, just some bad breaks. And that's just been the case for the Wildcats all year. Just a series of bad breaks. You had the penalty... And you had, you know, the, the pick six is all those things just coming back on you. So you really have to make sure, you know, you, you manage those mistakes and not have penalties. Just shoot yourself right in the foot because that's what it's been like for the Wildcats so far. Yeah, I say Peter McFarlane or whoever starts at QB, Jacob Harkins, um, they probably put Peter McFarlane in because he can – create plays and at the same time but I would say be careful doing that just because this defense this Eagles defense knows what Peter McFarlane can do with his running ability they've they've shut him down pretty well they today shut him down pretty well they they scoped out that half back direct or QB draw um any run, pretty much. We haven't seen him running too much. Yeah, he hasn't really seen him running. He hasn't really seen much of the Elgin offense so far. Their big play was a pass from Jacob Parkins all the way to Ty McFarlane. And McFarlane has some speed. He's beaten his man every time, as well as Trey Isom. He's had many opportunities. They've just been unable to connect, except for on that one play. Yeah, I would like to see. I bet they'll go out in that same play right then and there and just see if they score quick. Because that's what they need is just a quick score in the opening drive for your Elgin Wildcats. And if they can put up points and then they'll they'll eventually, you know, I mean, they'll find a way to come back in this game. You know, I've seen this kind of things happen before. 
But, you know, obviously, if you're the Cedar Creek Eagles, you have to keep your foot on the gas. You can't take your foot off the gas. And if you're the Cedar, if you're the Elgin Wildcats, you have to put your foot on the gas because you've had basically nothing going. I mean, it's, you've scored no points. So it's time this time you got to put the pedal to the metal and just not let your foot off. And if you're Cedar Creek Eagles, you have to make sure that you, you know, obviously keep the foot on. But... Let's see what the Wildcats can do. They're about to run out of the tunnel here. Two minutes, 30, 30 seconds left to play. So they left in the halftime. Both bands come out in the field. We always play the Elegant Band here on KMAX Sports. So less than two minutes left to go. The smoke's building up for the Elegant Wildcats. I do find it interesting that they run out of the tunnel in the second half. I find that, I don't know why, I just find that a little bit interesting. Because you don't, you don't normally see that. Usually when you have a tunnel, you run out in both halves, right? Yeah, I, I guess so, but they kind of they do the whole smoke and everything, so. And it goes back to I wish I had a tunnel back in my day. You still had fun, though, right? Oh, yeah, that paper, I was in the front. I was the shortest guy on the football team, so they allowed me at the front of the line. I was always in the back. So, because I <laughs> never really took the field. So I didn't take the field much. I didn't take the field <laughs> much either. You know, when, you, when you're two short guys like us playing football, you don't have much opportunity to get on the field. I was even a wide receiver, and I don't think I even remembered the playbook. That was how I was. That was me playing PA football. And Wildcats running out on the field. And you notice one of the, I guess, the fans of Elgin Wildcats running out with the flag. Yeah. Now... This is only the second time tonight we have heard the fight song for the Elgin Wildcats. And now they have a brand new paper they're going to run through for the Sea Creek Eagles. And that is going to be Wipe Out the Wildcats. That's original. Yeah. I, I, I've never heard that one before. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you here. So. We don't want them to wipe out the Wildcats. So it's going to be up to the Elgin Wildcats defense to literally have stopped them to zero points this half so the Elgin Wildcats offense can gain and bring that comeback. Definitely need to get momentum going. They will be receiving the second half kickoff because they did choose to defer. But will it be enough? You know, they have to come out and, and you got to score almost immediately. Not immediately, but... You, know, you have less time, obviously, in, in high school high school football here and as opposed to college and pro football. It's only 12-minute quarters. Looks like they're all going to be taking the field. So taking the field is the Elgin Wildcats. There's still a lot of smoke out in the field. Oh, like, wow. That is a lot. It's not going anywhere, too. In fact, it's only getting Maybe worse. The second half of play it's tonight. coming towards the players. Did defer to the second half. It almost looks like it's snowing right now. It, yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like kind of a snowstorm. Huge fog. Just, Huge yeah. Fog. I mean, we're not playing the fog ball. I'm... I'm, I'm sure about that, so this will be a little bit interesting. It might play into the favor of the Wildcats, or I'm probably going to pay, play more into the favor of the Cedar Creek Eagles because the Wildcats have to go into that fog. So Nathaniel Salas in, say Salas in to kick. Back deep to receive it is Ty McFarlane. Not been very many long kicks for the, wild, for the Eagles. Kick is up, and once again, a little short kick, and they're going to let it roll right out of bounds. So once again, trying to do a squib kick to the sideline, and it's going to roll straight out of bounds for the second time in a row. That's the third kick out of bounds tonight by both teams together. Both teams combined, that's what I should say. Kind of sort things out here. Look at now the fog is now basically just engulfed the field. Legal procedure, the kicking team, five yards. For the out-of-bounds spot, first down, Elgin. I have never seen this before because 
Mikey, look at this. Like, look at the ten yard line. It looks like there's Absolutely literally the snow the on the field. The it's just stuck to the field. Something must be going on. Like some some precipitation in the area. It's just a little bit jarring. Must be really humid out there. Let's I'm not call this game the fog bowl. <laughs> the fog bowl. We're <laughs> well, came fog bowl came back bowl. <laughs> yeah, the fog. Yeah, I think there already was a fog bowl way back then. So, not really sure. And it is going to be McFarlane in the gun. He's going to have one receiver to his left, one to his right. Going to take the snap, rolling to his left side, trying to find some running room. And he's going to be brought down after a gain of about two yards. So all the way to the 33-yard line. It's 61 degrees to start our second half. 87% humidity, and that half. fog is not going anywhere. Now it's just basically engulfed the, engulf the players. So they could still see them, thankfully, but it might get a little bit difficult in the future. McFarlane still in at QB. Ty McFarlane to his right. Excuse me, to his left. Takes a snap. Back to throw it. Looking, looking, looking. It's going to throw it deep downfield. Pass it for Ty McFarlane. It's going to be almost intercepted right through the hands of Dalen Jackson. McFarlane had his man beat, but Peter just could not get it to him. And he almost caught it off the deflection. They'll bring up third and seven on 35-yard line. At the same time with this fog going in and with these white uniforms that these Elgin Wildcats wear, it could create difficulty for them to see. It's like the fog is just about lifted, but most of it's sticking to the field. So McFarlane in the gun, takes a snap, back to throw it, rolling to his left side, trying to find some running room, and Pat Cat pass is going to be... Are they going to roll to catch? They are going to roll to catch. The catch was made by Trey Isom sliding down to the ground for a first down. All the way to the 43-yard line. And Harkins is going to be back in at QB. So for that first series, there's Peter McFarland for that first set of downs. Now it's going to be back to Jacob Harkins. So are you surprised that they're going to Harkins now? I, I am not because... Harkins is your he's more your guy. QB. He or takes he's snap. Your guy. He's gonna hand up up the middle. It's like that was Trayvon Black. I do believe. Actually, can I see his number? I thought I saw him. He got it before I had a chance to look at him. That was Jerome Ray. Also, Brian, I feel like that with you using both QBs, it pulls off, you know, it makes creates confusion for the defense. Definitely. So handoff once again to Jerome Ray. He dances in trying to find room, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of absolutely nothing. The run game has been non-existent for the Wildcats so far tonight. That once again brings up third down. They're going to call it a gain of one, so it's going to be third and six. Uh, sorry, third and five at the 48-yard line. One yard gain on the play. Third down. This time Trayvon Black is in the backfield with Jacob Harkins. In the gun. Takes a snap, rolling to his left side. He's going to pitch it off to Trayvon Black. Black has some running room, and it's going to be tackled just short of the first down marker, but there is a flag on the play that looks like that looks to be holding. Trayvon Black on the carry. Penalty flag on the play. Check the flag here. Coach for one of the assistant coaches for the... Looks like it's against the Eagles, or is it against the Wildcats? I'm not so entirely sure if we're looking at this referee. We're holding a parade on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. They're down. So it would have been a first down right at the 47-yard line, but now that brings up... Third and 15 after the, after the holding penalty on Trey Isom. And another penalty that Third hurts the like Wildcats. It's just been it's been like it's a story for them all year. It's just been back breaking penalty after back breaking penalty. When they get the first down, yet comes short again. Yeah. Back to throw to Jacob Parkins. He's going to throw it deep downfield. Pass intended and almost caught by Trey Isom. Threw into double coverage. That'll bring up fourth down. Another difficult pass to make by Jacob Harkins, throwing in double coverage, as you, as you mentioned, which when you do so, it it can be, <laughs> it can create trouble. It definitely can. Already has two picks tonight for Jacob Harkins. That's the last thing you want to do for your Elgin Wildcats, come up with another pick, and then creates great field position. 
possession for your Eagles. Ashton Figueroa in deep to receive it, in to kick it. Trevor Magnuson kicks it, almost blocked. I think he may have gotten a hand on it. It's, it's going to take a good bounce, and it's going to be muffed. The ball was muffed by Ashton. He tried to pick it up. It goes right through his legs after hitting his arm, and it's going to be first down at the 22-yard line for the Elgin Wildcats. Odie Henze in to recover. Oh, my goodness. Great job by Odie Hensy. This could be definitely a game changer here, as you, we've seen before that turnovers when Elgin Wildcats come up with that well, just can cause problems for the other team, which is great. Last time Elgin they Wildcats. were in this side of the field, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty pushed them back and out of scoring range. So Jacob Parkins is in at QB. A huge opportunity here for the Wildcats. Finally with great field p position too. Definitely. Parkins in the gun. Takes the snap, flag on the play. It's like this might be a false start. And it will be a false start. So back that one up about five yards, and we're going to try it again. Actually, hang on. It's like we're getting more work here. The officials are talking, so I believe it's a false start. It could also be encroachment. We're not entirely sure here yet. Officials are still sorting things out. None of the players have moved from the spot in the 22. They're all still standing there. And it is going to be a false start on the offense. Yeah, procedure. 15 on the offense, 5 yards. Repeat first down. So they call a legal procedure on Ty McFarlane. That's going to back it up all the way to the 27 yard line. So we can be first and 15. After the penalty, the ball is spotted at the 27 yard line. First so Harkins 15. once again in the gun. Takes a snap. Back to throw it. Throw it deep downfield. Pass it in for Ty McFarlane. It's going to be caught in the end zone by Ty McFarlane. Touchdown, Wildcats. They hooked up on the long ball, and the Wildcats are on the board. McFarland for the touchdown. That was a great, great route by Ty McFarland. Just that easy seam route that he loves and just scores a just great catch overall and for that T D was that also they just finally are looking for. A great throw by Jacob Harkins. Aaron Arson to attempt the extra point. Yeah, great hookup by Jacob Harkins. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So the Wildcats get on the board. With 9 minutes, 13 seconds left to play in the third quarter, our score is Cedar Creek 28, Elgin Wildcats 7. So we're going to take a short break here. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap please. again, he hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins has it. That's a corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. This is the K-Max Sports Network. Kenneth Escobar in to kick. Only a second kickoff tonight for the Elgin Wildcats since the be since the beginning of the game. Back deep to receive it. Javon Livingston. Once again, Escobar does not get a very big running kick, running start. Not a very short, long kick. He's going to be fielded right at the 30-yard line. Trying to run to his left side. He's going to run backwards. So he fielded at the 30, and he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Ty Pruitt takes the return. And that was number six, Ty Pruitt. So loss of five yards there. And actually, going to roll it down to the 27. Looks like the first down marker is at the 25. Tackle made at the 25-yard line. And it is at the 25-yard line. So we're going to get the first taste of this, this half of Hunter Houston and the Cedar Creek offense. They were basically ran rough shot against the Elgin Wildcats defense. Let's see if they can hold here. 
Hand off left side. Trying to find running room. And he gets all the way about to the 27-yard line. Trying to see who that was. That was Dominic Mojica. So second down, 8 and 27-yard line. Houston in the gun. He's got Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. It's getting, getting instructions from the sideline. Ten seconds left to go on the play clock. Takes a snap, and he's going to take it himself, trying to find running room, and he's going to be stuffed. That was a great job by this defense, Odie Hensey, coming up with stop. Quarterback Hunter used Number to 17. Keep on the play. And they're going to call it a gain of nothing. I thought line of scrimmage, no gain. Third down. Loss of yards. Stopping up third down and eight in the 27 yard line. This would be a huge stop here. Let's see what they can do. Definitely a stop what Elgin Wildcats have been looking for all game. Especially with momentum on their side. Let's see if the offense can get back out on the field. The defense needs to do their part, though, and make sure the offense can get back out there. So Houston in the gun, takes a snap, looking to throw. Pat pass is going to be caught and brought down short of the first down marker. Houston's pass is complete to number nine, Colton Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh is going to be stopped just short of the first down marker, and they're going to bring out the punt team. That was Odie Hensey and Odie Thompson yard line. on the play to stop fourth down. for this fourth down. And finally, a stop by the Elgin Wildcats defense. Ty McFarlane back deep to receive it. It'll be Hunter Houston in to kick. So this could be huge. Might be the spark the offense needs. Not touchdown, so here's the snap kick is up. Almost blocked. It's going to be a really bad kick, but it's going to take a tremendous bounce. That was almost out at the 45-yard line, and it stays in bounds. And it's going to be down right at the 35-yard line, so a good 10-yard bounce. So overall, that's a great job that Coach Jen, Jens Anderson has been doing so far. He noticed that they needed a sense of urgency and just created that touchdown and a stop for yep. your Elgin Wildcats. And 7 minutes, 29 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And we're going to see Jacob Parkins coming back out at QB. So far, McFarlane has proven he can beat his man. Let's see if they go back to him. Isom also on the right side. Takes a snap, looking. He's going to throw it to Trey Isom. Isom in the screenplay, in the flat, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of one yard. Trying to find running room. William Nissenblatt, the fullback. Market's pass complete to Isom. Stop made there by number five. But it is a gain of two yards. Three yard gain on the play. Second down and seven. Hey, it's better than going backwards. Going forward is all you need at the moment. McFarlane now in at QB. No. It is Jacob Harkins in. I did not see him. He's under center. Now he's back in shotgun. Two receivers to his right. He takes a snap. It's going to be an option. Pitch to McFarlane. Trying to find some running room. And he's going to break one tackle and brought down at the 42-yard line. Peter McFarlane on the carry. Tackle made by Josh Garza at the 43-yard line. And they're going to call down to the 43-yard line. So that will bring up third down and two. So this would be, this is really big play here. Wildcats need to keep momentum going, need to keep the offense moving. So Harkins will be there under the gun. McFarlane in the backfield. Two receivers to his left. Takes a snap, looking to throw it. Throws it, Ty McFarlane. Catch being made by Ty McFarlane. And it's going to be just enough for a first down on a button hook pattern. Now be Moving caught Cedar Creek territory, right at the 48-yard line. line. What a great pass there and a great catch by Ty McFarlane. Hurrying up to the line. Jacob Harkins in the gun. Hand off Peter McFarlane. Right side. McFarlane has some running. McFarlane at the 40. McFarlane has the first down. And all the way down to the 36-yard line. Stop made by Perez. See, 30... Six-yard line, indeed. Six yard line. First, down and ten. First big play for Peter McFarlane tonight. And that's where we see Peter McFarlane's speed. He has tremendous amount of speed when he gets open in the 
run, but we haven't seen him gain open as we have just yeah. now. You haven't seen him getting very much open space, so Harkins in the gun. McFarland in the backfield. Two receivers to his right. McFarland trying to draw him off sides. Takes a snap, looking to his left, trying to, he's going to throw it deep downfield. It's going to be intercepted by the Cedar Creek Eagles. Pass intercepted by Ashton Figura. Pass, pass intended for Ty McFarlane, underthrown. And just like that, they give the ball right back to the Cedar Creek Eagles. Third interception today by, J by Jacob Harkins. And if you're the Eagle Wildcats, that's something that you don't want to see especially when you have the momentum and everything. and um, Not the best thrown football as we saw him a throw little bit, short. A little bit underthrown. A little bit underthrown, Tried yeah. to force that one. So Houston's in the gun. He's going to have Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. Elgin Wildcats need a stop, and they need one badly. Houston takes a snap. Hand off right side. Actually, he's going to keep it himself that time and gains one yard. He keeps on the play. All the way to the 29-yard line. Gain of one, second down and nine. Great job by Brian Solorio in the D-line for creating that stop because that tricked me out there for a second. It tricked me out too. So Houston in the gun is going to have Mojico. Mojica, excuse me, and Fitzhugh back there with him. Second and nine, 29 yard line. Takes a snap, and this time it's gonna be He's gonna be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And actually, no, he did not hand it off, and Houston is gonna be, he is still gonna be sacked all the way back to the 25 yard line. And that was Brian Solorio, number 79 for Elgin Wildcats defense, creating a huge stack, and this could be one of the key plays of this drive for your Elgin Wildcats defense if they come up with a fourth down. Third and 13 at the 25-yard line. Mojica back there with Houston. He's going to have three receivers to his right. Fitzhugh is not on the field. Takes a snap, rolls to his right side. Looking, looking, can't find it open. He's going to throw it deep downfield. And pass can be intercepted. Intercepted by the Elgin Wildcats. He's at the 30-yard line. And he's all the way down inside the 30, the 25-yard line. I cannot see who made the interception. I believe it was Daniel Gonzalez. The receiver for the Wildcats, for the Eagles, fell down. And that's the first turnover for the, for the Cedar Creek Eagles. Oh my goodness. Shout out to number 55, Max Fisher, for creating that huge QB pressure in order to come out with that INT, causing the INT. So they're going to start this drive on the Cedar Creek 22 yard line for the Elgin Wildcats. Takes a snap, handoff up the middle, Peter McFarlane. McFarlane has some running room. He's being brought down at the 15 yard line. Peter McFarlane on the carry. And finally, Stop now Elgin Wildcats see the momentum line. again turning into their Same way the as we Same see that pick, that interception, which we've been looking for all season long with these turnovers. Definitely. And it looks like the Wildcats, the defense, is starting to play a bit more intensity. Second and three, 15 yard line. Harkins in the gun. Hand up, up the middle. Peter McFarlane. McFarlane at the five yard. McFarlane, touchdown! Peter McFarlane in to the end zone and coming out of the second half, the Wildcats have scored 13 unanswered points. And just like that, we have a ball game now. We have a ball game now. Definitely the spark that the offense needs after that muffed punt and the interception. Aaron Arst in attempt the extra point. Snap is down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So 3.15 left to play in the third quarter, and the Wildcats have stormed back and made it only a two-score game. So our score is Cedar Creek 28, the Wildcats 14. We're going to take a short break here while we get ready for the kickoff. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here on the K-Max Sports Bite Media Network. 
This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap complete. again, he hits the turf. And Dead Ross gives it up, Cameron Wilkins has it. In the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Javon Livingston back at the 20-yard line to receive this one. Kenneth Escobar in to kick. Let's see if we see an onside kick, maybe even a short kick here. You've seen a lot already, so might as well. <laughs> might as well, yeah. Momentum on your side. He's going to get a much more running start here, starting at 35. It is going to be a short kick, but fielded at the 20-yard line. And trying to find some room. Cannot find it. That was number eight, I do believe. That was Payne Allen. Number nine, Colton Fitzhugh on the return. It was actually Colton Fitzhugh, according to the PA announcer. And it's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. So no first down so far tonight for the Cedar Creek it's Eagles. The They've had nothing going, the including an interception. Their ten. drives have been a punt and an INT. So they've scored 14 unanswered points. And the Wildcat defense, it looks like they're playing a little bit more intensity here in the second half. Let's see if the intensity continues. And there's nine seconds left to go on the play clock. Seven seconds left to go. They're, they're a bit confused. Cedar Creek is. They are not sure. And now they're going to reset the play clock. So the play clock was down to two seconds. And they were pointing, wondering what's going on. It has now been reset. Now it's back at the 23 seconds. So Houston once again getting the plays from the sideline. He's in the gun. It's like Fitzhugh back there with him. Take a snap. He's going to hand off the Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh up the middle. Fitzhugh, he's going to have the first down. That's the first first down for the Cedar Creek Eagles tonight. Fitzhugh carries the ball 14 yards. To the 45 yard line. So 45 yard line. And that's the first first down so far. So Wildcats need to get in their stop. Two minutes, 50 seconds left to go. Clock is moving. Houston in the gun. Is he going to have Fitzhugh back there with him? Two receivers to his left. Takes the ball. Hand off to Fitzhugh. Actually, he's going to take it himself, and he's going to rumble forward and be brought down he's after a gain of three play. yards. Gain of three out Great job by Michael line. Price. Just running up and tackling him for just a little was, gain. So far in the, the, the short time that Cedar Creek has had the football, the defense has been able to shut down Hunter Houston, who's just ran over the ball. He had two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown in the first half. He was absolutely on fire. Houston in the gun, takes a snap, looking. Throws his right side, catch is made, but running backwards and brought Houston down in bounds. Javon Livingston. Javon Livingston, he had the ball three yards short of the first down, then ran backwards and basically just stopped. So that's going to bring up third and five at the 50-yard line. Bit of interesting decision there by Javon Livingston. Third and five, Houston in the gun. He's going to have Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. So takes a snap, running to the right side, looking, looking, throws it, and it's going to be in and out of the hands of Fitzhugh. Colton Fitzhugh had it right in his hands, and it just bounced right off of his chest, and that will bring up fourth down. And the Wildcats defense holds again. Huge stop by your Elgin Wildcats defense coming up with another fourth down, and seeing that we have momentum on their side, hopefully they can answer to this on the Elgin Wildcats offense. Only a minute left to play in the third quarter. Houston's in the Punt, Ty McFarland back deep to receive it. Takes a snap. Punt is once again almost blocked. This time it's a very high punt, not much distance. Let's see where they down it. 
And they're going to down it at the 20. So it looks like it's going to be more along the inside the 30-yard line, the 32-yard line. or Yeah, 32-yard line, excuse me. And that's where this drive will start. So a one minute, one second left to play here in the third quarter. And momentum is now really on the Wildcats' side. Harkins back in at QB. Takes a snap, looking hands off, up the middle. Peter McFarlane, Peter McFarlane breaks one tackle, then trips, falls down, just carry. short of the first down marker, right at the 38-yard line for a gain of around six yards. 38-yard line. Check that, 37-yard line, gain of five on the play. So it is 37, gain of five. Harkins takes the snap. He's going to hand off Peter McFarlane. McFarlane's going to get nothing on this play. McFarlane He's going to lose carry. yards back to the 35-yard line. That time they were prepared for the run to McFarlane. And that will bring up third and seven. Yeah, it looked like he had nowhere to go with the defense, D line, dumping it out, sniffing it out. So McFarland's going to step out in this play. In is Juan Castillo, the fullback. So it looks like we're going to see some blocking here, maybe even a screen play. There's no one covering Trey Isom on the right side. Now they're back, back to throw it. Looking, looking. He's going to throw it to Ty McFarlane, short of the first down marker. Breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle. He's going to be tripped up just short of the first down marker at the 40-yard line. They're two yards short of the first down. And that will bring us to the fourth quarter. The Wildcats have some momentum on their side. They've scored 14 unanswered to make this a two-score game. That is the final play of the third quarter. So we'll be back at the start of the fourth the quarter. quarter. We're going to take a short the break Elgin here. The score is Cedar, Cedar Creek 28, 28, Elgin 14. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. snap complete. again. He hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins That's the corner of the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. Touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social skill. On Twitter at KMAX Sports or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. Jacob Parkins in the gun. They're going to go for him. Fourth down. Fourth and two to go. Takes a snap. He's going to hand off Peter McFarlane. McFarlane pushing forward and they're going to blow him down short of the first down marker. I'm not so sure about that one. It looked like he had the first down. They're going to roll him just a yard short. So it's a turnover on downs inside in the opponent's territory, in their own territory. The defense has yet to has held them throughout most of the game. Ball will be spotted at the Elgin 41-yard line. Cedar Creek Eagle football first down and 10. Unable to pick up that first down. The defense has to make another stop, down by 14 points. Houston in the gun. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. So Houston getting placed in the sideline once again. Six seconds left to play. He's going to take it himself. Houston up the middle. Houston's going to be brought down past the first down marker all the way to the 29-yard line. That tricked me out totally. I totally thought he was sacked. I did too. Apparently it was a run. First down the 29-yard line. Fitzhughes back there with Hunter, Houston, and Mojica. Getting plays on the sideline. 14 seconds left to go on the play clock. Takes a snap. And this time he's going to hand off to Fitzhugh. And he's going to be stuffed. And the rules forward progress down after a loss of two yards back to the 31-yard line. Great job by Brian Solorio. And uh, can't read that other number, but good job game tackling. That was number 45 also. 
O.D. Thompson. Great job by them. Second and 12 now at the 31-yard line. 10 minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the game. Houston in the gun. Four seconds left to go in the play clock. Just get the snap off in time. Houston under pressure. Houston, he's going to throw it. And they're, tr and they're calling, and the Elgin Wildcats, they're trying to call for, trying to see, get, get, get him for intentional grounding. He was well outside the pocket, but the ball did not get back to the first down. They're trying to see if there was someone in the territory. The ref has a flag in his hand. This could be intentional grounding. This would be huge for the Wildcats. Houston was all the way back at the 50-yard line by the time he finally got rid of that football. Great job by Hody, Hody Hensey on the QB pressure there and causing We're intentional, grounding. intentional grounding. And they're going to... Be five yards. Replaying down. I think they're a bit confused there because that should be oh. loss of down. Loss of down. So a five-yard penalty brings up third and 17. Thomas. But again, great job by Odie Hensley, causing some stress towards the QB. And Actually, they're backing it up even further. This is inside the 45-yard line now. Wow. There's a bit of confusion now on where they're going to be placing the football. After the penalty. Ball is spotted at the 42-yard line. So now, third at the 42-yard line. A bit of confusion there by the referee. So third and 23 yards to go. 10 minutes, 31 seconds left to go here. Mojica in the backfield. Hunter Houston in the gun. Three receivers to his left. Takes a snap. Under pressure. Rolling to the right side. Looking, looking. He's going to throw it deep down the field, and it's going to be incomplete. That was a great job by number 28, Michael Price. Causing that pressure in order. And, he, and for the QB to just throw it away over everyone's heads. And the Wildcat defense has played with a much more intensity that we haven't seen them play with all year. And... It's because of that defense that they've been able to get back in this game. They've had a few lucky breaks on the muff punt and on some penalties that finally went against the other team. And the offense has done their part too, but the defense has done a tremendous job stuffing this offense. And this pick kick is almost blocked. I think actually it was touched. And that's going to be down at the 25-yard line. It didn't even get past the first down marker. That must have been touched because it looked funny in the air. So with 10 minutes, 16 seconds left to go, the Wildcats will get this ball on their own 25-yard line. Essentially, it's a touchback. At the 36-yard line of the Wildcats, Elgin football. Actually, no, they're gonna say that went out at the 36-yard line. That' a little bit interesting. I thought they went out on the 25-yard line, but it did not. That didn't even go back to the original line of scrimmage. So ball on the 36-yard line. Interesting. Harkins in the gun, two receivers to his right. Takes the snap, hand up up the middle, Peter McFarlane. Peter McFarlane has running room. McFarlane at the 50-yard line and finally brought down. Was the ball come out? Did the ball come out? And it did come out. However, it was recovered by the Wildcats at the 50-yard line. That was almost a disaster for the Elgin Wildcats. So McFarlane had running room. He lost the football, but... Great job there by the Wildcats to recover that football. So McFarlane, Harkins in the gun. McFarlane back there with him. Two receivers to his right. Changing the play. Takes a snap. He's going to hand off Peter McFarlane. McFarlane chugging forward all the way to the 45-yard line. So a gain of five yards there. Nine minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Clock still moving. Yeah, right now this is when the time is going to be in the factor for Elgin Wildcats. Yeah, time is of the essence. Second and five, 45-yard line. He's going to hand off, and the pass is going to be dropped. He's going to throw it deep down the field. And try there to receive was Ty McFarlane. That is not 
intentional grounding. It was a botched handoff. He was trying to hand off to Peter McFarlane. A great job there by Harkins to pick the ball up and throw it for an incomplete pass. And in this in the territory, Tom McFarlane. So there is no intentional grounding on that play. So that will bring up third and five of the 45-yard line. Harkins in the gun, two receivers to his right. He takes a snap, rolling to his left side, rolling, rolling, rolling looking, looking. Throws deep down the field, intended for Ty McFarlane. It's going to be caught. No, in and out of the hands of Ty McFarlane. He had it in his hands and unable to hold on to it. And he was streaking down the sideline. That would have been an easy That's touchdown. Intended for number 15, Ty McFarlane. But just one second line. over nine minutes left to play, and it's going to be fourth and five. It is fourth down. And they're not bringing out the punt team. In this situation, they're, they're going to go for it, it looks like. Harkins is still out there. McFarlane to the left. Takes a snap. He's going to roll it left. It's going to be a pitch to Ty McFarlane. McFarlane up the middle. McFarlane, he has the first down. That time, he was able to get to the first down marker all the way to the 38-yard line. Yeah, great job by Peter McFarlane. Just going to that first down marker as the previous thrown ball was way past <laughs> and just everyone's head. Just a great job there to, to execute. So Harkins in the gun. He's going to hand off. It's going to be reverse. Reverse time McFarlane. McFarlane has running with McFarlane. He tries to break one tackle and is brought down the 30-yard line. So it was a reverse, a handoff to Peter McFarlane. He pitched it to Ty McFarlane and a gain of eight yards. More like seven yards, excuse me. And he had one man to beat and was brought down. So Peter McFarlane's going to step out here in, in his place. Is no one in the backfield. This is an interesting setup here. Very interesting. I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, they're gonna hand, they're gonna snap it to Ty McFarlane. McFarlane is gonna be brought down to the 20 yard line. And flag on the play. There's flags all over the place, and there's a bit of a fight breaking out here. This could be against Cedar Creek. I'm not entirely sure. This could be another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Wildcats, second of the night, but let's check the flag. It was an interesting formation there. Yeah, that's one of those trickery formations where, like, the lineman is, like, lined up so differently where it definitely tricks out the defense and causes a first down, obviously. And yeah. With that penalty. Well, let's though. check the flag here. This might be might attack on some more yardage. Or it might be coming back. It was a horse collar tackle. Oh. We had a horse collar on the play. 44 blue on the defense. That put us half the distance. First down. You don't see horse collar tackles often. And when it, I understand that, <laughs> I would be mad too if I had got tackled by a horse collar. <laughs> it was kind of Roy Williams who kind of was the first to really make that, you know, a penalty. He'll play for Oklahoma and for the Cowboys. So first 10 on the third line. Handoff to Trayvon Black. And Black's going to be brought down at the 9-yard line. And the ball was placed on the 11-yard line. There's 7 minutes and 37 seconds left to play. And the Wildcats have a chance to make this a one-score game. Trayvon Black in the backfield. They're giving McFarlane some chance to catch his breath. Trayvon Black carries inside the 10-yard line. Harkins is going to be in the Same gun. Down. Two receivers to his right. Black in the backfield. Takes a snap. Throws it. Fade past Ty McFarlane. Cass is going to be caught! Caught by Ty McFarlane! Touchdown Wildcats! Nine yard oh my goodness! For the Second touchdown of the game for Ty McFarlane. Third touchdown by McFarlane overall, and the Wildcats, pending the extra point, have made it a one-score game. That was another great seam route by Ty McFarlane, an easy seam route to the left side of the end zone, and just 
Easy pass, easy catch, touchdown. Aaron Arson and tip the extra point. Kick is up and it looks like the kick is good. It is good. Seven minutes, six seconds left to play. The Wildcats have made a one score game. They have come back in this game. Oh my goodness. We have a treat for you on this uh, yeah, if you're listening, Halloween weekend before <laughs> it, <laughs> trick or treat. <laughs> it definitely, yeah. Like hey, you're listening to this game, you know it's a, uh, you know it's 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 been a really fun game so far. So all the momentum is now on the Wildcats side. They have seven minutes and seven seconds left to go. The defense, I just want to give you no know, real good praise to the defense because they have really stepped up in this second half. They've had, you know, their backs up against the wall and they've been able to stop this wild, this Eagles offense. And so you just have to give them praise because they've had troubles all year getting teams off the field. They've had penalties against them. So this is, you know, this is great to see the defense playing with a little bit more intensity than you've seen them play with all year. So if you're Cedar Creek, you gotta be probably shaking a little bit and like, what's going on here? The game was all in our, in our hands. All of a sudden, we find ourselves only up by seven points. Kenneth Escobar in the kick, and they're expecting an onside kick here. They have the hands team out. The shield back to each receiver, but they're not expecting a deep kick. But there is no one. Now they're backing up. There's about no one in between the 40 and the 35-yard line. Now there is someone. It's going to be, looks like number six, Try Ty Pruitt back deep to receive it. Escobar, he's back at the 35-yard line. He's probably going to try to kick this one deep. Kick is up, and the kick will be kicked deep. Fielded by Javon Livingston. Livingston has running room. Livingston's going to be brought down right inside the 35-yard line. Kickoff is returned by number 10, Javon Livingston. Out to the 33-yard line. So that's a drive will start in the 33-yard line. Six minutes, 59 seconds left to go. The Wildcats defense has done a great job holding the Eagles offense. I know I've said that more than a few times, but it, it cannot be overstated. The, the job that the Wildcats defense has done, containing Hunter Houston and containing Mojica, as well as containing Colton Fitzhugh. And once again, the play clock is back down to six seconds. They're a little bit confused, and now they're going to reset the play clock, it looks like. There we go. As the second time this has happened for the Cedar Creek Eagles. So Houston's going to be in the gun. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. Takes a snap. He's going to hand off Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh's going to run right into the Wildcats line and back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all they're going to get. That was a great job by number 79. Brian Celoria, we've seen him a lot Nobody today so Second far. Down. Him and Odie Hensey have been coming up huge for this Elgin Wildcats defense. Houston in the gun, now getting instructions from the sideline. When they're getting the instructions, by the way, that does take valuable time off the clock. So that's pretty good clock management there if you're the Cedar Creek Eagles. So Houston will be in the gun. Takes a snap. He's going to Fake the handoff. Houston has it himself. Houston running up the sideline. He's going to have the first down and pushed out right around the 49-yard line, maybe the 50. The 49-yard line is where they're going to call it. He's still in their own territory. So a gain of 10 yards, actually more like. Goes out of bounds at the 50-yard line. That now they're going to call it at the 50, so it's a gain of 14. Down. Once again, Houston in the gun. Mojico, Mojica, excuse me. And Fitzhugh back there with him. Ground game is going to be their best friend right now. So Houston in the gun. Takes the snap. He's going to hand off Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh. And he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Nothing was going to stop. Number 56, Cody Arbogast. Just breaking through the O-line and immediately bringing down the QB. The They're going to call it. A loss of one after forward progress, so second and 11 at the 49-yard line. Did a great job sniffing out Fitzhugh. Houston in the gun. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. One receiver to his left, one to his right. Fitzhugh takes the snap. 
Hands off to Fitzhugh, excuse me, Houston. And the ball is going gonna, gonna to be down at the 49-yard line, this time in Elgin territory. That brings up third and nine. This is probably the most marked. This is the biggest uh, series so far for the Elgin defense. They need to stop here in order to give their offense a chance to tie this game back up. Plus give them some time, the Elgin Wildcats offense, to make that Definitely, because... You know, to tie the game. so far on this drive, the you know they've taken a minute off the clock. Cedar Creek has actually more like two minutes off the clock. You know, so they've done a great job of wasting this clock. Four minutes, fifty seconds left to left to play. It's going to be a fake to Mojica. He's going to throw it deep downfield. The pass is going to be broken up. Pass intended for Ty Pruitt, and once again, the Wildcat defense holds. That was great coverage by David Ison coming up with that incomplete pass. And number two for your Elgin Wildcats as well, breaking up the pass. So this time, back to receive the punt is going to be Trey Isom. Isom has some speed to him. They might be expecting to get a return out of this one. Hunter Houston in to kick it. Four minutes, 40 seconds left to go. We have all three timeouts left. Both teams have all their timeouts. Have his back, and the kick is almost blocked. It's going to be a little short kick, and Isom's going to let it bounce, and it takes a good bounce inside the five-yard line, actually right at the five. It was running like it was going to go in the end zone, so Isom let it roll, and it stops at the five. So a great punt there by Hunter Houston. So the Wildcats have to go 95 yards to in order to have a chance to tie this game up. Well, excuse me, two tied this game up. The they got as you mentioned before, we've seen this happen. Yep. We've seen this done. They got a long way to go in a short time to get there. Harkins in the gun. Black in the backfield. And they're going to hand off to Black. Black has running room. Black has the first down. Black moving, moving his feet all the way down to the 25-yard line. That'll, that'll give you some breathing room. A game of 20 yards. I just love this play, how Trevion Black just keep kept running and running and running his feet even when he hit the tackles and just kept moving them off the line for I mean, 20 just, yards. Just, he was carrying defenders with him. Just a great job. They're going to pull him down next to the 26-yard line. So Harkins in the gun. And he's going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw deep downfield. Harkins, he's trying to fight Tom McFarlane, and pass is going to be overthrown, intended for Ty McFarlane, I do believe. Harkins pass is incomplete, intended for number 15, Ty McFarlane. He had room and just overthrew him just a little bit. They were going for the home run there. They'll bring up second and 10, the 26-yard line. Three minutes, 53 seconds left to play. Wildcats down by seven. Trying to tie this game up. They were down 28 to nothing at the start of the half, and they have stormed back in this game. Harkins takes a snap. Screen pass to Isom. Isom breaks one tackle, breaks another one, and brought down just short of 30-yard marker at the 29, and that will bring up third down. Brought down in the field of play. The clock will continue to run. Peter McFarland coming back on the field. Yeah, the biggest thing about this play, this they kept him in bounds, which um, keeps the clock running, and we need the clock not to run at the moment. <laughs> yeah, right now we need time is not on our side. Harkins takes the snap. He's going to pitch to McFarlane. McFarlane trying to find room. McFarlane, he has the first down. McFarlane inside the 40-yard line. Once again, a clutch first down by Peter McFarlane on that pitch play. And it's another first down by the Wildcats. All the way to the 41-yard line. Harkins in. McFarland still in at running back. Takes a snap. Back to throw it. Harkins. He's going to throw it down the field. Ten for time, McFarland. It's going to be overthrown into coverage. That could have been disastrous. McFarland was step by step with his with the cornerback. So, what do you think about throwing it on first down? Just trying to go deep, deep ball, Ty McFarlane. They're, they're looking to tie this game up, and they're looking to tie it up. 
now. I feel like throwing the deep ball on first down is unexpected, especially from a QB who's throwing out the pick, pick six and interception throughout this ball game. So, I mean, to pull the defense, you know, off and thinking it's going to be a run, you know, is I would say it's a great call. Harkins takes a snap. Running up the middle. Harkins is going to be past the first down marker inside the 50. For the first time tonight, Harkins takes it himself. It, that was They were setting up to the pitch play to Peter McFarlane, and now they're in Eagles territory. Two minutes, 50, 45 seconds left to play, and the ball's on the 49-yard line on the first run tonight by Jacob Harkins. McFarlane in the backfield. Harkins in the gun, two receivers to his right. Harkins takes a snap. This time he's going to pitch it to McFarlane. McFarlane has open field. McFarlane, he's going to be brought down just short of the first down marker. Let's see if they put him down all the way to the 46-yard line. I thought he got a little bit more out of that one, but at my angle, it is a little bit difficult to truly get where they get down. It's, all, it's a five-yard gain. It should bring up second and five at the 44-yard line. The scoreboard says third and five, but the man on the sideline says second and down. Causes some confusion here. He was pushed out of bounds, so the clock is stopping. Harkins getting a play from the sideline. McFarlane in the gun. Two receivers to his left. McFarlane in the backfield. Harkins in the gun. Takes the snap, and they're going to hand off McFarlane up the middle. McFarlane's going to be brought down, and there's a flag on the play after the tackle was made all the way to the 39-yard line. This could be against the Eagles. This could be huge for the Wildcats. And the Eagles are already starting to back up, so it, it is going to be against the Eagles. It was a face mask. A face mask on the, on the Eagles, and that's going to set up... On the defense, number 99, 15 yards for the end of the run, first down. And that's going to set up shop inside the 25-yard line at the 24, 218 left to go. Huge penalty. Harkins in the gun. McFarlane in the backfield. Harkins takes a snap. Look, looking. Throws to Ty McFarlane in the end zone. And it's going to be caught. Caught in the end zone by Ty McFarlane. Oh, my goodness. Third touchdown of the game for Ty McFarlane. And the Elgin Wildcats are an extra point away from tying this one up. Can you believe it? And just like that, Ty McFarlane, same route from the previous touchdowns. Great pass, great catch. Ty McFarlane, touchdown, ties up this game almost. Now the all-important extra point. Snap is low, kick is up. And the kick is good. That was almost blocked. It was a low kick. And with two minutes and six seconds left to go, we're all tied up here at Bastrop Memorial Stadium. Like I said at halftime, I've seen the Wildcats come back before in softball, and they've proven they can do it in football. An absolutely incredible effort here by the Elgin Wildcats. Just unbelievable. And I just love how Jacob Harkins just went back after throwing those picks, interception, pick six. And he just came back and just started passing it like, you know, he truly, he is a great passer. And he just came back and proved. And essentially proved just just put it in the back of his head like, right. like any good athlete right. does. You put your mistakes, you know, just in the past, you know, you got to keep moving forward. So back deep to receive this one will be Javon Livingston, Kenneth Escobar in to kick this one off. Two minutes, six seconds left to go. Both teams have all their timeouts left, and they may have given the, the Cedar Creek Eagles a little bit too much time on the clock to get this one in field goal range. But, you know, either way, putting up 28 points. Tying this game, giving you a chance. Just a great effort. Great effort. A great job by the Elgin Wildcats. 28 unanswered points. Kick is up. It's a short kick. It's going to be fair caught inside the 30 yard line. Right at the 30. It's like, yeah, it's like indeed the 32 yard line. Two minutes, six seconds left to go. We're all knotted up at 28. 
So this little brief recap here, the Wildcats had nothing going this in the first half. They had 14 points scored against them with less than two minutes left to go. They were down by four scores. All of a sudden, it's all tied up with two minutes left to play here. Now the defense has to do their part. And they've been doing a great job all night containing this offense. Houston in the gun getting plays from the sideline. Once again, having to reset the play clock. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with him. Houston in the gun. He's going to hand off to Mojica. Mojica, he's got nowhere to go. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Number 21, Mojica on the carry for the Eagles. I think the ball may have come out. To the 33 -yard line. And they were signaling that, people in the Elgin side were signaling that it is Elgin football, but after gain of one, they're going to say he was down. I did not see the ball come out. So second and nine at the 33-yard line. One minute, 40 seconds left to play. Houston getting the plays from the sideline. The clock is not on the side of the Cedar Creek Eagles now because they're letting time just tick, tick, tick away here. And they're still trying to run the football. It might be playing for overtime. Not 100% sure he's going to take the snap. He's going to fake the handoff. Houston under pressure. Houston rolling to his right side. Throws it deep down the field. It's going to be incomplete. And that stops the clock. With a minute, 18 seconds left to go. Third and nine for the Cedar Creek Eagles. This would be huge for the Wildcats with their, with their timeouts left to go. They might have plenty of time to get the ball back down the field that they can pull out a stop right here. And right now, if you're a coach, Jen Anderson, I know you don't want to go in overtime. With the momentum right now in the fourth quarter, you're going to want to make a huge stop here and give that ball to your fired-up offense. You definitely do. So Houston in the gun, takes a snap. He's going to throw this one under pressure, and pass is going to be incomplete. No, they're going to say he caught it. I thought the ball hit the ground. But no matter, he is still stopped just short of the first down marker. I thought that ball hit the ground, but they're going to say it was a completed catch all the way to the 39-yard line. It'll be fourth down to go, and they're going to bring out the punt unit with one minute and one second left to go. Actually, just exactly a minute. The clock has stopped, but no one called a timeout. There we go. Elgin has taken a timeout with a one minute left to go on the play clock. So they're going to have a minute and two timeouts, hoping that the you know, thing of the punt gets off, you know, without a hitch. Or we block it, you never know, to go down the field and win this game in regulation. So I just want to once again point out just the tremendous job containing the Cedar Creek offense by the Elgin Wildcats. They've had all their issues all year, getting teams off the field with penalties and turnovers, and this has just been a tremendous job there. And also by the Elgin Wildcats offense for that sluggish first half, able to come back and tie this game up. I mean, that was huge. And now they're going to have a minute left to hopefully win this game. So Houston into the punt. They're going to come after this one. Isom back to receive it. And Houston gets the kick off. Isom's going to have a chance to return this one. He takes the snap. He bobbles it. He picks it up. Runs backwards. He has running room. Houston all the way inside the 35-yard line. That was almost disaster for the Elkin Wildcats. He dropped it. And able to pick it up and get inside the 30-yard line. And it looks like you have a player down. He's okay. He's picked back up. <laughs> 47 seconds left to go. Two timeouts. Punt is returned up to the 30 now, if you're Elegant Wildcats, I, w I say don't force anything game. where you can't and continue what you're doing to um, split this kind of split this up a little bit. You know, just run the ball. And the fans on the Elgin sideline are going completely nuts, and you gotta like to see that. It's you can hear a pin drop on this sideline. They're gonna do it end around, and he's gonna be brought down behind the line of scrimmage is Trey Ice, and they set up in under center and brought Dolly back down to the 30-yard line, and the clock's gonna continue to run. They might be playing for overtime now. 30 seconds left to go, and we might be seeing overtime here because they're taking their time getting back to the line of scrimmage. They probably don't want to have a mistake cost them, and yeah, they do have to run a play, though. The play clock is still just a little bit ahead of the regular clock. 
So we're going to see some overtime here unless a miracle happens on this play. Harkins is going to set up in the gun. Two receivers to his left. And he's going to snap it with one second left to go. Hand off Peter McFarlane. McFarlane up the notch. Tray Trayvon Black brought down the 35-yard line. But that's the end of regulation. The Elkin Wildcats have stormed back in the second half. And it's 28-28. That is the and we're going to go to overtime. So the, after the end of regulation, the score is Elgin Wildcats 28, Cedar Creek Eagles 28. So we're going to take a short break here while we get set for overtime. You're listening to Elgin Wildcats football here in the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. Snap again, he hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up, Cameron Wilkins has it. the corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got blockers in front of him. Touchdown. 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 Five. Touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. broadcast. At KMAX Sports, 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 we work, we work hard, hard to provide quality, quality professional, professional broadcasts broadcast to make This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Look at the left. 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 Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Side, he's got lockers in front of him. Touchdown! 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 It's what we do, and nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources and provide. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on KMAXSports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on KMAXSports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. Follow all the game day action right on our Twitter feed, at KMAX Sports. Socialize with us. You don't have what they call the social skill. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports, or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way, KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. Welcome back to Elgin Wildcats football here on KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. So I've called extra inning games for Elgin Wildcats. I've called extra inning games in baseball, softball. This is my first ever overtime game. This is a new experience for me, and it looks like for these officials too, they're not quite sure what the rules are, and they're going to set up at the 25-yard line. So hmm. the rules in overtime is pretty much the person, there was a coin toss, and the winner of that legs to either pick receive or kick and it looks like or the just Wildcats probably like, won that. It's like offense or defense. So they're going to start off on defense 
And the ball is going to start at the 25-yard line. So essentially, it's and just Elgin like in college. And there's no game. And there's no game clock. There's a play clock now. So it's essentially just we're going to go back and forth. We could be here all day. We're all night, I should say. Just what a great game so far. All right, so Houston's going to be in the gun. Mojica back there with him. Two receivers to his left. Getting a play call from the coach. Now they're going to change positions. Now Mojica's going to be on his left side. Houston takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself up the middle, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about... They're going to call him down the 20, the 19-yard line, so a gain of six yards. So second and four now. Houston in the gun. Yes, whatever Elgin Wildcats want to do, they don't want to give up the big play whatsoever. They do not want to give up the big play. They've done a great job so far of containing this offense in the second half. Let's see how they do in overtime. Second and four, 19-yard line. Handoff, Mojica up the middle. Mojica's going to be brought down just short of the first down marker at what looks to be the 17-yard line. So that will bring up third down. That's another great stop by 28, Michael Price. Gets two yards on that play. Okay, you're going to see Colton Fitzhugh come out. Javon Livingston come in. Javon Livingston's coming out in this play. So, see what happens here. So, third down and two in the 17-yard line. You might see them go for it if they get to fourth down because not much in the realm of trying to kick one here. Takes the snap, handoff, and he's going to keep it himself is Houston. Houston almost had the ball stripped away from him, it looked like. And he's brought down inside the 15-yard line at the 14. So be first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Cedar Creek, this is the first time in the second half, or just since the first half, they've been inside, you know, Elgin territory. This is in overtime. So ball on the, they're going to call it the 13-yard line. It looks like 13. The the first down markers have it set in the 14. Actually, no, that is on the 13. Excuse me. Mohica gets inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Gain of 4 on the play. Second down and 6. So second down and 6 on the 9-yard line. Houston in the gun. So second and six, nine yard line, Houston in the gun. Mojico back there with him as well as Fitzhugh. Houston takes a snap. Hands off Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh is going to be brought down at the 10 yard line. So a loss of one yard will bring up third and seven. So far in this game, they've done a great job. So far in this game, they've done a great job of containing Fitzhugh. It's just been a, excuse me, Mike, backwards. There we go. It's just been a great, they've done a great job of containing him, and that brings up third and seven. So Houston's in the gun. Mojico back there with them. Fitzhugh's off the field. Javon Livingston is on the right side. So Ty Pruitt on the left. Be huge here for the Wildcats. Houston takes a snap, throws it right side, and he's going to be tackled, and he caught, and then brought down short of the first down marker. Huge stop by Odie Hensey coming with the tackle there to make it a fourth down and seven to go. And they're going to try for the, the field goal here. Nathaniel Salas, this will be the first field goal attempt by either team in tonight's game. And it will be kicked from the 15-yard line. It will be a 25-yard kick. Ball's down. Kick is up. It's blocked! The kick is blocked! And stop short of the first down marker. The Wildcats able to come through, and now with any score in their next possession, this game's over. What a turn of events. Now all the elegant Wildcats have to do is just kick a field goal and call and it history. <laughs> kick a field goal and get out of here. But 
right now, your goal is just to score. You shouldn't be thinking about just trying to get if you score a field goal. You want to score. But then again, incredible block by Elgin Wildcats defense special teams on the play. So Peter McFarlane in at QB. Ty McFarlane back. See it. Peter McFarlane takes himself. McFarlane at the 15, at the 10. McFarlane run down the sideline, and he's going to be out of bounds at the nine yard line. Biggest run of the day for Peter McFarlane. Jacob McFarlane is carrying in this ball, carrying this game on on his shoulders right now as he just completely runs to the right side and for a huge gain. Jacob Parkins in at QB. Ball on the nine-yard line, first and goal. Might see another play to Ty McFarlane here. Parkins takes the snap. Hands off to Peter McFarlane up the middle, tripped up right around the six-yard line. Wildcats six yards from Paydirt. Looks like they're going to calm down at the seven-yard line, so it'll be seven yards from Paydirt. No, it's a six. Second down. Let's see if Elgin Wildcats can capitalize. Let's see if Wildcats can end this game right here. Harkins takes a snap. Peter McFarlane running right side. McFarlane's going to be pushed down after a gain of nothing. That will bring up third down. Now all they need is a field goal, but after seeing that other previous field goal by the other team, the they the want to just score this Yeah, you want to just get his hands on. You want to make it as easy as possible of a kick. So maybe center it, just try to get more yards, but don't, tur don't do anything you know, to turn this ball over. You want to just keep it on your side of the field and don't have anything go backwards. Harkins in the gun. Two receivers to his right. In motion goes Isom, and they're going to take it himself as Jacob Harkins. And the ball's out. The ball's on the field. There's a flag down. And it's going to be a face mask. According to one referee, I think the ball did come out. I'm not entirely sure. But I didn't know who had the football. It looked like Harkins had and it looked like, then it looked like McFarlane had it. But there was a flag on the field, and it looks like the initial call is face mask, and that would be an automatic first down. Here's a play. We have face mask on the defense. Automatic first down. The ball will be at the one-yard line. What a penalty, and what a turn of events. It's wow. been no penalties against the Wildcats in the second half or in this overtime period. It's now the Wildcats with first down are one yard away from Paydirt. Takes a snap. Harkins. Harkins up the middle. There's no signal by any referee yet. No signal. Elgin Wildcats think it's touchdown. No signal by any, any referee. And they're going to call him just short at the one-inch line. It'll be second down. I was getting ready to storm the field there. <laughs> I was getting ready. Yeah, I was getting ready to do that too. Boy, what a penalty can do to change this game. Harkins under center. Takes the snap. Bobbles the snap. It's recovered by the Wildcats. Wait, it looks like and it is recovered by the Cedar Creek Eagles. Disaster for the Wildcats. They were one yard away, and they bobbled the handoff. It's now Cedar Creek football. So this is where things get tricky. So now we go in double overtime because that was the first overtime, and considering, I believe, um, this is why you want to be on defense first. Uh, right? Definitely, obviously. The Wildcats, I believe they do start an offense on this overtime period. Yes, and I believe if Elgin Wildcats score, we will have Elgin yeah. on defense, on offense. Offense, yeah, we'll that's right. Three on defense. Now we're in second overtime. overtime Boy, what a game! So <laughs> yeah, a blocked, a blocked field goal, and then a fumble recovered at the one yard line. Elgin was one yard away from sending this all home happy, but a botched snap and. Now we gotta try. Now they gotta try one more time on offense. Huge break for the Cedar Creek Eagles, and a first really bad break for the Elgin Wildcats offense. In this, you know, since the first half. And Ty McFarlane, he was pumping up the crowd. It was everyone was going crazy, 
And now we're in a second overtime period. Just an unbelievable game. I've never seen one like this before. I've never called a game like this before. B. McFarlane in at QB. Let's see what he does here. McFarlane takes a snap. Run to his left side. He's under pressure. He's going to be brought down. Actually, no. He's, he is going to be brought down past behind the 30-yard line. That time, they were ready for it. He tried to run to his left side. And had nowhere to go. It'll be second down and a long way to go. So second and 18. Peter McFarlane still in that quarterback. So McFarlane in at QB. Trayvon Black in the backfield. Takes a snap. It's going to be... McFarlane's going to keep it himself, and he's going to have nothing to know where going. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Third and 18. Wildcats in danger of letting this one slip away from them. Jacob Parkins is going to come in. So once again, third and 18 on the 33-yard line. After that loss of eight on first down, Harkins is going to be in at QB. McFarlane in the backfield. Just trying to get it closer and hopefully have a shot so Aaron Ars could try to attempt a kick. Two receivers to his right. Harkins has it. He's rolling to his left side. Rolling, rolling. Throws deep downfield. Pass it in for Ty McFarlane. It's going to be intercepted in the end zone by the Wild, by the Eagles. Another turnover and the fourth interception thrown by Jacob Harkins. Overthrown to Ty McFarlane. And now the Eagles will have a chance to win this game. Yeah, definitely uh, not the best pass you would do at this moment. Way over the Elgin Wildcats receiver's hands. and Just not, so, not the best play. So the Wildcats had a chance to win this one on the first overtime period. And now the defense has to do it. They've been doing all second half. Step up and stop the, and stop the Cedar Creek Eagles. Now, I think if Elgin Wildcats stop them here, I'm pretty sure it would be just a tied ball game. Yeah, if they might end in the tie. They don't They don't go to third overtime period. They just end in the tie? I I believe so. I think you only do two overtime periods. Well, let's hope. <laughs> let's just hope. We'll be Houston in tonight, the gun. In handoff, and it's going to be kept by Houston. Brought all the way to 25-yard line. Right, Fitzhugh was almost brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That blob was handed off to Fitzhugh, but it was not. And it's going to be brought all the way to the 22-yard line. Second down and six. So Houston in the gun, getting plays on the sideline. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with them. Defense has done a great job of containing Fitzhugh and Mojica. Second and seven, 22-yard line. Houston in the gun, takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself up the middle. And he's going to be brought down at the 20-yard line. That'll bring up third and five yards to go. I think they're playing a little conservative now. And trying to just set it up for a field goal, maybe. That too, that's all they need. So Houston in the gun. Mojica and Fitzhugh back there with them. Third and five on the 20-yard line in the second overtime period. No team score in the first overtime period. Houston has the snap. Looking to his left side. Looking, looking. Throws deep down the field, and it's going to be overthrown. And that will bring up fourth down. Great coverage by the Wildcats. So it's going to be fourth and five, and they're going to bring out the field goal unit. This is going to be a long kick. That's a long way to kick a football. Wildcats blocked the last field goal attempt, and people on the sideline, they're getting down on the one knee. They're hoping for this one. Ball's going to be kicked at the 27-yard line. That's a 37-yard field goal. Long way to kick this one for Nathan Salas. A chance to redeem himself here. Ball down, kick is up, the kick is, and the kick is good. Wow. Cedar Creek wins it on a 33 yard field goal in the second overtime period and the crowd is going nuts. 
An absolute heartbreaker by the Elgin Wildcats. They came all the way back from 28 points down to tie this game up and had a chance to win it with the ball on the one yard line in the first overtime period. And a botched snap just could not get the job done. But what an amazing game by both teams. An absolute incredible effort by the Elgin Wildcats. One of the best games I've ever had a chance to call. It didn't go our way, but it was still an absolutely amazing game. Yeah, great job with Peter Hark Jacob Harkins and Peter McFarland hanging in there after huge plays and, and mistakes, you know, but they continue the past the adversity and, you know, either way, it will turn out to be a big ball game, huge game, and great job for both teams, because you don't see this often in high school football going in double overtime and ending on a field goal kick, you know. Lately, it's either been like a blowout game or a close one, but... Not all the time an OT game. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So our final here at Bass Shop Memorial Stadium, Cedar Creek Eagles 31, Wildcats 28 after two overtimes. So from all of us here at KMAX Sports, I'd like to thank my producer, Michael, our QA, which is our QA today. Our QA, shout out to Christopher. Christopher Akue, Chuck Licata, Merle the Pearl Bertrand, and as always, a shout out to my parents, Murphy and Shelly Reed, for getting me this opportunity to call these games. It's always a dream come true to get to call these games, and, you know, I just really thank them. And thank you for Elgin for letting me call your games. I really do appreciate it. It's been an absolute blast. I love calling y'all games, and I can't wait to be back here next week. And who are and, they playing next week? <laughs> and I want to mention um, Elgin Wildcats, you know, as your bus drive home, just keep your heads up high. You played a heck of a ball game. Definitely. And uh, move on towards next week as you play Bash Drop High School Bears. There's nothing, nothing to be ashamed about here. You played your absolute heart out, and you made this game an absolute classic, in my opinion. That was one of the best games I've ever had the the privilege of calling. And you know, keep your head held high. You know, you'll come back. You'll get them next week. And at Mitchin, I just love how Cedar Creek Eagles are out there on the field at the moment, just getting behind Eagle Wildcats, 10 yards behind them, and just showing them support. And what a hard-fought game this was yeah. for these both, two of these both teams, great teams overall. Yeah. And you know, definitely showing some respect to the Elgin Wildcats. An absolute great game by both teams. All right, this is Brian and Michael from KMAX Sports Fight Media Network, and we had time. Sign off. Bye.